Hey everybody, welcome back to The Stuff of Legend. My name is Dilo, and today we have the most momentous, most gigantic video for fan casting you've ever seen. Welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit number four. This is going to be an epic occasion of grand proportions. I'm very excited to show you guys the greatest, most awesome fan casters you've ever seen for fan casting on Instagram and now here on YouTube via the Fan Casting Summit collaboration event. I'm super excited. Follow all these guys on Instagram and follow this chart as well because this is the stacking order we're going to be seeing these guys present in as well. I'll have the timestamps down below for you guys as well so you guys can click there and jump to your favorite fan casters after you've gone through and seen the entire video because it's a great presentation and you're going to get a fresh perspective on who the fan community wants to play these roles in the MCU. Quick recap for you guys, previously on X-Men MCU Fan Casting Summit, we did Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Angel, Beast, Iceman, Professor X, and Magneto. And get ready for the Mutant MCU Uprising because Fan Casting MCU X-Men Part 2 is here. We are going to be discussing Wolverine, Gambit, Rogue, Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, Shadowcat, Jubilee, Mystique, and Sabretooth. Ten more of your favorite mutant characters from the world of the X-Men to join the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the next couple phases of the Cinematic Universe. So let's get into this. All right, first up we have World of Fan Casts. Welcome to the Fan Casting Summit. We have here, first picks for Wolverine is Shia LaBeouf from Fury and Transformers and Taylor Kitsch from Friday Night Lights and X-Men Origins Wolverine. He played Gambit in X-Men Origins Wolverine. I thought he did a good job. I thought that movie was a little bit mishandled. It was a great effort. It was a great idea, but I think it wasn't executed properly. And I think Taylor Kitsch being a fantastic actor and also I think great for the role should get an opportunity to play Wolverine. However, I am a huge fan of Shia LaBeouf, his work in Fury, his work in Transformers. He tends to play a younger role, more of a kid, but this guy is a talented actor. If you watch some of his indie work, this guy is phenomenal and he can do rage. We've all seen the video, just do it, just do it. We've seen that video and we know that this guy has probably a lot of issues personally, but I think he's a fantastic actor and I think he could pull off Wolverine. I, and if I had to choose between the two of these guys, I'm going with the shorter one. Shia LaBeouf. All right, next up we have Gambit, Remy LeBeau. We have Jeremy Irvine from Billionaire Boys Club and War Horse, and then Robert Sheehan from the Umbrella Academy and Misfits. Now I will say, if you're gonna go for a younger feel, I would go with Jeremy Irvine, but I think I want my Gambit a little bit more mature, even though Robert Sheehan is a little bit on the thinner side. I think he could bulk up, and I think that he would have the chops to play the player, the ladies man, Gambit. So I'm going with Robert Sheehan. Both of these are great choices. Next up, we have Rogue, Anna Marie. We have the first choice is Mary Elizabeth Winstead from Sky High and Birds of Prey. Uh, and the Fanta <laughs> I forgot the name for the Birds of Prey, I think it's, and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn coming out in 2020. And then also Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones and A Star Wars Story. If I had to choose between the two of these to play Rogue, I'm gonna choose Mary Elizabeth Winstead. I think she carries much more of a, of a strength. She seems a little bit more sizable, imposing. I know that uh, Rogue is a lady, but she's also a lady mutant and lady mutants happen to be very big. And uh, not a lot of them are very small. I'm going to choose Mary Elizabeth Winstead, frankly, because I don't see her in enough things. And I think that she's a good actress and she looks a little bit more to me the part. So I'm going with Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Next up, we have Storm. Yaya DaCosta from Chicago Med and Chicago Fire. And also Deborah Ayorinde um, from Girls Trip and Barbershop The Next Cut. I think that both of these ladies look like Storm. In my opinion, either of those, those women would be able to play Storm. If I had to choose, I think I'm gonna go Yaya DaCosta. But what I like about Deborah Ayorinde is that her face has a very strong uh, bone structure and I think that she still looks very uh, pretty and I think she would be able to pull off the look plus that picture shows off that she has very big hair and I like that for some whoever's gonna play storm has to have hair that's blowing in the wind all over the place so I think that's a good choice both of them are great between the two of these I think based on these pictures Deborah is my choice all right next up we have Nightcrawler a fan favorite Asa Butterfield from Ender's Game in the Space Between Us and Fionn Whitehead from Black Mirror, Bandersnatch, and Dunkirk. I like both of these guys. I, I think that the sharper features on Fionn Whitehead would lend itself to the visual um, aesthetic to Nightcrawler. 
However, Asa Butterfield is a talented actor. He's up and coming. Um, people know him from his child acting work, but I think that it would be nice to see him in something else. However, between the two of these, I think I'm still going Fionn Whitehead. I'm gonna go Fionn Whitehead, and no matter what, I want my next, the next Nightcrawler that appears better freaking have a sword. So that's, that's my opinion there. Let me know what you guys think down below between the two of these. Great choices so far. Next, we have Colossus Pyotr Nikolaevich Rasputin from the Motherland. Ilyana, my sister, she's in trouble. Florian Montianu from Creed II and Bogat, which is a film I've never seen. And then Danila Kozlovsky from Viking, not Vikings the show, but Viking the movie, and In the Hood. Both of these guys are sick for the role, but I personally like Florian Montianu, and I want to see him play the next Colossus. He would be fantastic. Playing the son of Ivan Drago, how do you not go from there to Pyotr Nikolaevich Rasputin? That's what I want. All right, next up, we got Shadow Cat, Kitty Pride, Kiernan Shipka from The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and Mad Men, and then Odea Rush from Lady Bird and The Giver. If I had to choose between the two of these, I would go Odea Rush. I like her better. I think that she has more of a younger um, feel when you watch her on screen. And I think that's important for whoever's gonna play Kitty. She doesn't have to be a kid, but I think it would work out better for me personally. So I'm going with Odea. Next up, we have Peyton Elizabeth Lee for Jubilee or Jubilation Lee, which I think looks pretty darn spot on. And Aquafina, who's a very funny, young, talented Asian actress and rapper from Ocean's 8 and Crazy Rich Asians. I loved her in Crazy Rich Asians. Um, I didn't even really <laughs> notice her <laughs> in Ocean's 8. Uh, it was kind of like she wasn't really playing herself. She was playing like a little hacker chick or whatever. It was interesting. I wasn't a huge fan of that movie, but I was a huge fan of Crazy Rich Asians. And I like her, but I think for this role, for Jubilee, she's got to literally be the kid of the group. And I think Peyton Elizabeth Lee is cut out for this one. I think Andy Mack, Shameless, her work just shows that she can play this character. I think it would be great. So next up, for Mystique, Raven Darkholm, we have actor number one is Sophia Butella from Kingsman and Atomic Blonde. If you guys don't remember her, she was in, uh, in Kingsman. She was the one with the uh, metal uh, stabby legs that were like springy and whatever. She uh, was fantastic. She's a world-renowned actor, dancer, um, acrobat, um, gymnast. She's crazy. She does all of her own stunts, most all of them. And... Charlize Theron, uh, Theron, Th uh, Theron, I don't know how to say it, honestly. I'll probably mess that up a bunch, this, this fan casting summit, but whatever. Bear with me on that. Atomic Blonde and Mad Max Fury Road. Wow. This is, this begs the question, how old do you want Mystique to be? Because if we're going to have Nightcrawler in the MCU, Mystique is his direct parent. It's his mother. So she has to be at least approximately 15 years older. If you're speaking very young biologically. Um, so I would suggest possibly Charlize Theron for accuracy, but the fact that she's a shapeshifter means that she doesn't necessarily have to look that old and her mutant ability probably helps her not look old anyway. So Sophia Batello is a great option. I like both of these. It's almost a tie. I think I'm probably going to go Sophia Batella. That's where I'm going. But Charlize Theron is honestly a great, great choice. Okay, Sabretooth. Next up, we have Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy and James Preston Rogers from Alpha Wolf and The Masked Saint. I love these guys. Um, I think both of these guys would be perfect for Sabretooth. However, James Preston Rogers is six foot six. It's gonna be hard to find someone that will have that kind of stature to contrast against whoever you pick for Wolverine. I am going to definitely go James Preston Rogers, and I think that a role like Sabretooth doesn't need a lot of lines. We don't have to have uh, another Sabretooth from Wolverine Origins, which by the way, I love Lee Shriver as Sabretooth, but Sabretooth from the comics wasn't a man of many words. And so we could have James Preston Rogers in that, in that role, a very important role, but it doesn't have to be a very wordy role. So I think he would be great for that. So next up, let's take a look at the full roster from World of Fancast. First, we have Team 1. Wolverine is Shia LaBeouf. Then we have Gambit, Jeremy Irvine, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Yaya DaCosta, Asa Butterfield, Florian Montiano, Kieran Shipka, uh, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Sophia Batella, Ryan Hurst. And then the Team 2, we have Taylor Kitsch, Robert Sheehan, Amelia Clark, Deborah Ayarinde, Fionn Whitehead, Danila Kozlovsky, 
uh, Odea Rush, Aquafina, Char Charlize Theron, and James Preston Rogers. I love both of these teams. If I had to pick one team though, I think I might, this is really tough, man. This is really tough because some of my picks were like up and down on both of these. <sighs> I might have to pick, I'm gonna go team one because I really like Shia LaBeouf as Wolverine. And I, I think Ryan Hurst would do a great job. Sophia Batella, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, uh, Florian Montianu, Yaya DaCosta, Mary Elizabeth. I think it's great across the board. So let me know what you guys think down below. Do you guys like team one or team two from World of Fancasts? And which would you choose for the MCU? Let's keep moving. Thanks, World of Fancasts. And now, Fancaster76, welcome to the Fancasting Summit. Let's take a look at your choices. First up, for Wolverine, we have Tom Hardy, Mad Max Fury Road, and Venom. And we also have Scott Eastwood, Pacific Rim Uprising, and Suicide Squad. Now, I know what you're thinking. Both of these guys are in alternate comic book universes. So we have Venom, uh, Tom Hardy. He's in the Sony-verse, which is not the MCU. Um, and then we have Suicide Squad for Scott Eastwood. That's DC, uh, and that's not Marvel's universe. So can that work? Well, I know that a lot of actors have gone back and forth from Marvel and DC. A lot of the ones that start in Marvel aren't allowed to go to DC, but the ones that start in DC are allowed to travel to Marvel. Um, on, even sometimes, even if their contracts are current and active, depending on the situation. Um, I think that Scott Eastwood is viable. Tom Hardy would be difficult because it's such a big name property. I don't know if Marvel would want that kind of confusion for their, their customer base, us, even though we could probably handle it. But I would choose Tom Hardy. If I had to choose between the two of these guys, I'm going Tom Hardy. I think both these options are in fact viable. It would just have to be negotiated by the separate uh, universe entities or by the actor and that other alternate universe and see if like Kevin Feige would be willing to have that kind of um, actor contracts overlap. You know what I mean? So let's see how that goes. Cause we know that there's another Suicide Squad coming up and there's another Venom coming up at some point in the, in the near future. So Tom Hardy's my choice. Sorry about all that backstory. So anyway. Um, Gambit, Remy LeBeau, we've got Ian Somerhalder from Lost and Vampire Diaries, which is perfect. And then Garrett Hedlund from Tron Legacy and Triple Frontier. I honestly believe both these guys could do it. I like both these, but for me, it's definitely Ian Somerhalder. That's my choice. Next, we have Rogue, Lily James from Baby Driver and Cinderella. And then at the bottom, we have Natalie Dyer uh, from Stranger Things and Velvet Buzzsaw. I really like both of these choices and I love Natalie Dyer, Natalia Dyer, sorry, not Natalie, Natalia Dyer, but Natalia Dyer, I think is too young to play Rogue. Whoever plays Rogue needs to be close in age to Gambit. And I want Gambit a little bit older, not old, but a little bit older. Um, and so I'm going to go with Lily James, even though she's not much older, but I'm going to go Lily James on this one. I love Natalia Dyer, but I think she's better suited as like a shadow cat or something like that. You know what I mean? So that's that's my opinion there. Let's go to the next slide. Storm Aurora Monroe. We have Yaya DaCosta again and it, from Chicago Med and Chicago Fire. And again, Deborah Ayerinde from The Walking Dead and Star Trek Discovery. Now, I remember last time I said because of the picture that they had before, I like Deborah and I chose Deborah. Well, in general, I like Yaya DaCosta better. Um, and since I don't particularly like either of these photos, <laughs> not to, not to bag on your photo choices, but you know, it shows off the hair. That's kind of the thing that I like some aesthetic like that. Yaya DaCosta is my choice. Cause I like her as an actress better. I like her as an actress better. So that's why I'm going to pick Yaya DaCosta and she's got a really strong bone structure. All right. Next we have, uh, Nightcrawler, Ezra Miller from Justice League and Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. And again, Asa Butterfield from Ender's Game and The Space Between Us. I like Asa Butterfield for this role, but look at the jaw and the cheeks and the nose and the eyebrows and everything about Ezra Miller screams, please make me Nightcrawler. He looks like he would be playing Nightcrawler and he should be playing Nightcrawler. And I think that would be an opportunity for him to step outside of the ADD vibe a little bit and just play a role that has some sincere, sweeter elements. And then when he's actively sword fighting, let him get all jittery and pokey you know, with the sword and everything like that. He could play that to his strength in certain contexts. I think it would be great. I think Ezra Miller would knock it out of the park. I like his flash in DC, but I also like the idea of him as Nightcrawler. So if they could work that out, which I don't think they will, it's more unlikely. I think it's more likely that Asa gets it, but I would go with Ezra Miller. So that's why. Next up. 
Colossus, Piotr Nikolaevich Rasputin. We have Liam Hemsworth from Isn't It Romantic in the Hunger Games. And then also Alan Richson from Titans and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I freaking love both these guys. I think they're both great. I think they'd both be wonderful in these roles. I have other casting choices for Liam Hemsworth. I think he's a, a great option as a backup. I think that the better choice here is Alan Richson. His physique is literally godlike. He has the physique of Atlas. The guy is a freaking stud. He should get that role um, as as Colossus. I, and plus, he has that like squared up jaw. Liam Hemsworth has a little bit more of a narrow face. You know what I mean? And so for me, I think it's gonna be Alan Richson. Next up, we have Kitty Pride. Kaylee Bryant from Mary, Loss of Soul, and Legacies. And we also have Haley Steinfeld from Bumblebee and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Kaylee Bryant. Um, so for me, this isn't very difficult, but maybe it is for you. Let me know down below if you disagree with me, but I'm definitely going Haley Steinfeld for this one all the way. I think she's great. She's the right age. She's the right look. Um, she's got the right personality. She would be perfect for uh, Shadowcat. I think that would be wonderful. Next up, we've got Jubilee. So Peyton Elizabeth Lee again from Andy Mack and Shameless. And we also have Ellen Wong from Glow and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Depending on how old you want Jubilee to be, right? If, if you want Jubilee to be the kid, which she's supposed to be, that's how she was written, um, then Peyton Elizabeth Lee all the way. However, I like Ellen Wong and I think that Ellen Wong would play the role really well. So if you are okay with going a little bit more uh, either neutral age with, the, with a lot of the like younger crowd for the X-Men, um, but not near necessarily the youngest, or you want maybe a little bit more of a mature L, uh, uh, Jubilee, I think Ellen Wong is your pick. So I like her. And I, between the two of these, I'm going Ellen Wong, even though Peyton Elizabeth Lee would be much more accurate for her age. All right, next up we have uh, Mystique, Sophia Batella again, and Charlize Theron again. So I think, uh, again, between the two of these, I would probably go Sophia Batella. Um, but Charlize Theron, I love, I love her as Mystique as well. It's basically a tie for me, but I'm just gonna go with Sophia because of the action scenes we could get. I think I like her better for those things. So that's what I'm gonna do there. And last here, we have Jai Courtney for Sabretooth uh, from Suicide Squad and Terminator Genesis and Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy. I like both of these guys. Jai Courtney is a sick option. I think he would be awesome in the role of Sabretooth. Um, Given the choice between the two of these, I'm not sure, dude. I like Ryan Hurst a lot. He's one of my top picks. Um, but Jai Courtney does have that face. He's got that face look, you know what I mean? Uh, I think between the two of these, I'm gonna go Jai Courtney. I think he convinced me. So I'm gonna go Jai Courtney there. Now let's look at the teams. Team one, Tom Hardy, Ian Somerhalder, Lily James, Yaya DaCosta, Ezra Miller, Liam Hemsworth, Kaylee Bryant, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Sophia Batella, and Jay Cor Jai Courtney. Second roster is Scott Eastwood, Garrett Hedlund, Natalie Dyer, I'm sorry, Natalia Dyer, Sonequa Martin-Green, Asa Butterfield, um, and uh, Alan Richson, Haley Steinfeld, Ellen, w Ellen Wong, uh, Charlize Theron, and Ryan Hurst. Sorry for all this stuttering. Um, so anyway, and I think that's, De is that Sonequa or Deborah? I forgot, I think I might have, might have typoed that. Sorry guys. But nevertheless, these are the teams. Between the two of these, I have to go team one all the way so i think team one all the way is the best option here that's for me let me know what you guys think down below and again sorry for the typo and the stuttering there uh, it caught me off guard when i read the name a little different so that, that bugged me a little bit sorry about that that's my mistake next up we have fancast power so fancast power welcome to the fan casting summit number four let's take a look at your at your options so first we have tom hardy from mad max fury road and venom and second we have shia labeouf from fury and transformers so we've talked about both these guys already between the two of these i am going to go with shia labeouf that's my choice there um i think he's like an inch or two shorter than tom hardy and um, I think he's all, just as great for the role as Tom, in my opinion. I know a lot of you guys are going to disagree with me, but that's fine. That's what this is all about, just to come together and share our opinions. So t let me know down below. Leave that comment and tell me if you would choose Tom Hardy over Shia LaBeouf. Let me know. Next up, we have Jamie Dornan for Gambit and Garrett Hedlund as well. So between the two of these, I'm not sure. This is very, very tough for me. I really like Garrett Hedlund but I think I might have to go with Jamie Dornan for this one from Robin Hood and 50 Shades of Grey. 
We know that he can play that seductive bad boy. If he can, if he can whip up that Louisiana accent and and just nail that type of a charm, I think we have our guy. I think that would be really cool to see. And either one of these guys, in my opinion, could do it. It's very, very close. Um, I think Garrett Hedlund has him a little bit on aesthetic. Like his look, he looks a little bit more like Gambit, but it's very close. I think on experience, I'm gonna go Jamie Dornan. But nevertheless, that's what I'm that's what I'm gonna pick right there. So let, let me know down below what you think. Next up for Rogue, we have Haley Steinfeld from Bumblebee and Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, and then Anya Taylor Joy. Between the two of these, and she's from Glass and the New Mutants, between the two of these, I'm gonna have to go with Haley Steinfeld even though I think she's too young for this role. I think she's still a little young, but Anya Taylor-Joy to me doesn't look like a rogue. So I'm gonna have to go with Haley Steinfeld on that one. Next up, we have Yaya DaCosta from Chicago Med and Chicago Fire, and we have Janelle Monet from Moonlight and Hidden Figures. I think both of these ladies are very great for this role, but I'm gonna go with Yaya DaCosta for sure, because the, her face shape looks a lot like Storm to me. So that's what I'm going with. Next up, we have Brandon Flynn for Nightcrawler from 13 Reasons Why and Stranger Things. And then we have Thomas Brody Sangster from Game of Thrones and The Maze Runner. Thomas Brody Sangster is a great actor and I like the guy, but I don't see him as Nightcrawler. I do, however, see Brandon Flynn. I think this is a very out of the box pick I did not think of and I like this. I think that he would be perfect for this role. Put a sword in his hand, put a tail on his butt, and this guy is Nightcrawler. Just paint the guy blue, and we got something going on here. I like this. Good eye on that one. I like Brandon Flynn for that. So next up, Colossus. We have Charlie Hunnam from Sons of Anarchy and Triple Frontier, and we also have Alan Richson, Titans, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, I like Charlie Hunnam, but I do not think he is cut out to be Colossus. I do, however, love Alan Richson in the role. I'm going Alan Richson all day. I think to me, he just, he has that build. He's got that personality down. He can do it. I, I know that he got that. So um, that's my choice. Next for Shadowcat, we have Violet Bean and from Truth or Dare and Tower. And then we also have Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things and Velvet Buzzsaw. Now, if you had put Violet Bean against literally anyone except for Natalia Dyer, I would have picked Violet Bean, because she looks so much like Shadow Cat, especially the picture that you chose right there on the right. That is so accurate. But I love Natalia Dyer, and I think I would pick her over Violet Bean, but I would probably pick Violet Bean over literally anybody else. And I didn't think of Violet Bean at all for this, so good eye, good choice. Way to think outside the box, fan cast. Um, power. I'm sorry, I got your name wrong up here on the top. It's not Fancaster76. I forgot to change that. My mistake. I'm very sorry about that. Next up, uh, Jubilation Lee. We have Shiori uh, Katsuna. And I gotta put a disclaimer. On her IMDb, there's two names. Shiori and Shioli with an L. So I'm not sure which is correct, but I put that up there. So hopefully this is the correct one. Shiori Katsuna from Deadpool 2 and The Outsider, and then Peyton Elizabeth Lee from Andy Mack and Shameless. Between the two of these, I would go with Peyton Elizabeth Lee because I think that she is just better uh, better suited for the role being that she's the appropriate, appropriate age for the role. So that's where I'm going with that. And Mystique, Raven Dark, Darkholm, we have Natalie, uh, Natalie Dormer from Game of Thrones and Captain America, the first Avenger. And actor two is Sophia Batella from Kingsman and Atomic Blonde. I really like uh, Natalia, Natalie Dormer, but Natalie Dormer is already in the MCU. She had a very, very, very brief role. Um, she was the girl that flirted with Captain America in Cap 1, the first Avenger. And, um, and then, uh, what's her name? Peggy Carter sees it she sees cap she's like i don't care and then she like goes to test the shield she shoots cap three times he blocks it and she's all yep shield works she was really just pissed because the other chick was flirting with him and he didn't stop it and she kissed him even so uh, natalie dormer is that chick here and i think she would be awesome in the role but i'm still going sophia batella because she's just all around suited for the role of mystique um next we have Sabretooth, Jai Courtney, again, from Suicide Squad and Terminator Genesis. And then we also have Travis Fimmel from Vikings and Warcraft. Now, this one's tough for me, but if I had to choose between the two of these, I would go Jai Courtney 
because he's bigger, he's got a more imposing face, and I think he looks a little bit closer to the role, although Travis Fimmel looks a lot like him, and I freaking love Travis Fimmel. He did such a good job in Vikings. He was one of the best parts of Warcraft. I loved him in that movie. So that's that. Now let's take a look at the rosters, all right? So for fan cast power, see this slide actually has the accurate name. Sorry about that again. Wolverine, Tom Hardy. Then we have Jamie Dornan, Haley Steinfeld, Yaya DaCosta, Brandon Flynn, Charlie Hunnam, Violet Bean, Shiori Katsuna, Natalie Dormer, and Jai Courtney. For team two, we have Shia LaBeouf, Garrett Hedlund, Anya Taylor-Joy, Janelle Monae, Thomas Brody Sangster, Alan Richson, Natalie Dyer, I'm sorry, Natalia Dyer, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Sof Sophia Batella, and Travis Fimmel. This one's really, really difficult for me, but I think I'm gonna go with team one. I'm gonna go team one on this one. Let me know what you guys think about FanCast Power's choices here. I love these. These are great, but I'm going team one. Next up, we got Jax FanCasts. Jax, welcome back to the FanCasting Summit. We have, first up, James McAvoy from Glass and X-Men Dark Phoenix, and then also Daniel Radcliffe from Horns and Harry Potter. Now, you're asking, hey, why are you casting someone that's already in an X-Men film? Because the Fox universe is closing after Dark Phoenix. So Dark Phoenix will be the last movie in the X-Men franchise, and then all these actors are free to take whatever job they want. So putting them, those actors that are no longer in a Marvel franchise that was not part of the MCU, and taking them and putting them in the MCU, even though it's still X-Men, it's a different universe. I think this is a great choice because he's a fantastic actor. He got friggin' jacked for glass. Um, however, Daniel Radcliffe is five, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's five foot five, making him one of the most ideal actors to play the role of Wolverine if you're gonna go comic book accurate. Now, you would have to beef the crap out of Daniel Radcliffe. Um, he'd have to work out for like a year prior to the role, at least, probably two years, and uh, just get beef city for this role. Um, and then, but his acting chops, both these guys are A grade actors. They're talented, they can do anything. Um, I think they would be really great for this. And so I'm gonna go between the two of these guys, Daniel Radcliffe. All right, next up, Gambit. We got Jeremy Irvine from Billionaire Boys Club and War Horse. And then Gaspard Uliel from Hannibal Rising and St. Laurent. I like both of these, but again, I want someone a little bit older. And Gaspard Uliel is, an, is a French actor. Um, and I think he would be perfect to go right into that um, transition from a French accent into a Louisiana accent, which is derivative of French. So I think that that would be the best option there. I think he looks the part, he's got that swag to him, and I think he would be um, one of the best options possible for Gambit. So I'm going Gaspard Ulio. All right, next up we have Rogue, Lily James, Baby Driver and Cinderella, and then also Daisy Ridley from Star Wars The Force Awakens and Murder on the Orient Express. I really like this option. Between the two of these, I am going Daisy Ridley because she looks the part and she is a very talented actress that a lot of people right now uh, usually like or don't like The Force Awakens. Usually not, usually not hate. People hated The Last Jedi. A lot of people hated it. Not everybody, but a lot of people. Most people were pretty okay with the Star Wars The Force Awakens until The Last Jedi came out. And that's when the criticism started to spew backwards, forwards, and all over Star Wars, which is weird and I don't get it, but um, The Force Awakens was pretty good. And uh, I, I like Daisy Ridley, so I think she would be great as Storm. So I think she would be great <laughs> as Rogue. I messed that up. Rogue. Next up, we have Storm, Yaya DaCosta, Chicago Med, and Chicago Fire, and Sonequa Martin-Green, The Walking Dead, and Star Trek Discovery. So again, between the two of these, I am going with Yaya DaCosta. Make that quick and easy. Next, we have Nightcrawler, Timothy Chalamet from Beautiful Boy and Lady Bird, and then also Fionn Whitehead from Dunkirk and the Children Act. Now again, Fionn is good for the role, but Timothy Chalamet has one of the most uniquely pointed chiseled jaws for young actors alive today or probably ever. This guy looks like Nightcrawler. He's the perfect amount of slender with a broad shoulder base, but also really sharp facial features and long hair, he just looks the part. This guy is great for Nightcrawler, especially if you're going with a young Nightcrawler. So that's my take there. I think I'm going Timothy Chalamet. All right, 
Next up, we have Alan Richardson from Titans and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then Liam Hemsworth from Isn't It Romantic and The Hunger Games. Between the two of these, I'm going to make it quick, Alan Richardson is my choice. Next up, Shadowcat, Haley Steinfeld from Bumblebee and Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, and then Natalie, or Natalia Dyer, sorry, Natalia Dyer, Stranger Things, and Velvet Buzzsaw. I am going to go with Natalie, or Nat I'm going to go with Natalia Dyer. Sorry, I keep messing her name up. That's, uh, that's my bad. All right, Julie, uh, Jubilee, all right, Jubilee, Jubilation Lee, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, uh, and from Andy Mack and Shameless and Lana Condor to all the boys I've loved before and Alita Battle Angel. I like, uh, between the two of these, I'm going to go Peyton Elizabeth Lee. I'm not a huge fan of Lana Condor yet. I think she's good. But I think if, if I was going to choose between even two good or good-ish actress, actresses, I'm going to go with the one that, to me, looks the most the role. And I think that's clearly Peyton Elizabeth Lee. But let me know if you think I'm wrong. I want to hear that. Next, we have Mystique. Sophia Batella, Kingsman, and Atomic Blonde. And again, Charlize Theron, Atomic Blonde, and Mad Max Fury Road. Sophia Batella is my choice yet again. All right. And then Sabretooth, we have Jai Courtney. From Suicide Squad and Terminator Genesis and Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy. I am going to choose Jai Courtney between the two of these. I, I really like Jai Courtney for this one. Even though Ryan Hurst is one of my choices. Um, so Ryan, so for Team 1, for Jack's fan cast, we have James McAvoy, Jeremy Irvine, Lily James, Yaya DaCosta, Timothy Chalamet, Alan Richardson, Haley Steinfeld, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Sophia Batella, and Jai Courtney. Then after that, we have Daniel Radcliffe, Gaspar Duliel, Daisy Ridley, Sonequa Martin-Green, Fionn Whitehead, Liam Hemsworth, Natalia Dyer, Lana Condor, Charlize Theron, and Ryan Hurst. Now, if I had to choose between the two of these teams, I would probably pick, even though, this is tough for me because I really, I like the first half of the, of the team two, and then I like the top half mostly, of team one so this is really tough for me no you know what i think i'm gonna have to go with team two because daniel radcliffe gaspar de daisy ridley um i think fionn whitehead is great liam hemsworth would do fine i guess uh natalia dyer is great charlie's throne's great and ryan hurst is great so most of that team for me is a win i'm gonna go team two but let me know if team one is the one that took the cake for you guys because for me i was almost on the fence there that was really close for me so next up, Nerds United, welcome to the Fan Casting Summit. Welcome back. All right, so Steven Dorff is the first choice and Ben Foster is the second from Lone Survivor and Hell or High Water. Um, I like these guys, but from, oh, and Steven Dorff is from Blade, by the way, and True Detective. But Ben Foster is the choice for me. I really like this guy. He played Archangel in X3. Um, and he's older now, of course, but I think he would do a great job as Wolverine. He's a great option here. So next we have Alden Ehrenreich for Gambit uh, from, and from Solo, A Star Wars Story and Hail Caesar. And then also Ryan Gosling from First Man and La La Land. Even though Ryan Gosling's really good at being the ladies man, I think Alden Ehrenreich has that too. And between the two of them, the one that looks to me the most like Gambit is Alden Ehrenreich. So I'm gonna go with Alden on this one. Way to think outside the box. All right, next we have for Rogue, a Emmy Rossum from Shameless and, Cre and Beautiful Creatures, and also Daisy Ridley from Star Wars The Force Awakens and Murder on the Orient Express. Between the two of these, I'm gonna go with Daisy Ridley. <laughs> that, was, that, was a, uh, th that one was a thinker for me. Uh, here's, here we go. Storm, Sonequa Martin-Green from The Walking Dead and Star Trek Discovery, and Nathalie Emmanuel from Game of Thrones and Furious 7. If I had to choose between the two of these, I think I'm going to go with Sonequa Martin-Green. Next, we have Nightcrawler, Kier Gilchrist from Atypical and It Follows, and then Rami Malek, or Rami Malek, uh, from Bohemian Rhapsody and Mr. Robot. I like these guys, but between the two of these, just like my pick for Ezra Miller, I think Rami Malek has that look that does look quite a bit like a Nightcrawler. I think he's got that... Um, like sharper jaw feature. He's got really like, uh, you can't see it in this picture, but his cheeks kind of like are really sharpened. I think that he would be a good choice for this, for Nightcrawler. And he's not super big either. 
um, which kind of helps him have that nimble feel. You know what I mean? This other guy, Keir Gilchrist, he looks a little bit taller, but his head shape to me doesn't doesn't seem like Nightcrawler. So next up, Colossus. We have Kevin Durand from Lost and Wolverine Origins, or X-Men Origins Wolverine, and Robert Maylet, if you're saying that correctly, from Pacific Rim and 300. Um, both of these guys are freaking giants. And they'd be really, really good as Colossus. But between the two of them, I'm going Kevin Durand. Because Kevin Durand, he's got that square jaw. This guy, Robert Maylett, has a really like long face. And Colossus, it, he has a square jaw and a squared head. And that's something that Kevin Durand has. So I'm going to go with Kevin. And by the way, Kevin Durand played Blob in, in X-Men Origins Wolverine. But now I think it would be more appropriate for a giant jacked human being to play Colossus. I think that's better suited. So let's give that guy a chance to have some pride in his character. You know what I mean? All right. So next up, we have Shadowcat, Haley Steinfeld from Bumblebee and Into the Spider-Verse, and Caitlin Nacon, if you're saying that correctly, or Nacon, I don't know how to say it. Uh, I think it's Nacon, <laughs> like bacon. So uh, The Walking Dead and Tagged. Um, between the two of these, I'm going Haley Steinfeld. I haven't seen much with Kate, Caitlin, so I don't, I don't really have a feel for how she acts. Um, but I do like Haley Seinfeld, and I think she'd be great. So that's what I'm choosing. Next, we have Jubilee, uh, Paris Be Barelk, if I'm saying that correct, from Alexa and Katie, and also Invisible Sister. And then we also have Piper Curta from Teen Beach Movie 2 and I Didn't Do It. Between the two of these, I think I'm going with Piper Curta. Uh, to me, she looks a little bit more like a Jubilee. All right, and then Mystique, we have Ava Green from Dumbo, the new movie Dumbo and that's coming out and also Casino Royale and Lauren Cohan from The Walking Dead and Supernatural. Between the two of these, I would choose Lauren Cohan. I think Lauren Cohan to me on on looks feels a little bit closer to the character. Um, on acting, I'd go Ava Green, but on looks, I think I'm going to go with Lauren Cohan. So that's what I'm choosing. All right. Sabretooth. We have Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy, and then Charles Halford from Constantine and Bad Times at the El Royale. I haven't seen Bad Times at the El Royale, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose Ryan Hurst. I think Ryan Hurst looks a lot more like a saber tooth than Charles Halford does. Um, and so I'm gonna go with Ryan Hurst. All right, let's take a look at the teams. We have Steven, uh, Steven Dorf, Alan, Alden Ehrenreich, Emmy Rossum, Sonequa Martin-Green, Keir Gilchrist, Kevin Durand, Haley Steinfeld, Paris Burrell, uh, Ava Green, and Ryan Hurst. That's team one. Now we have team two, Ben Foster, Ryan Gosling, Daisy Ridley, Nat Nathalie Emanuel, Rami Malek, Robert Maylett, Caitlin Nakin, Piper Curta, Lauren Cohan, and Charles Halford. Between the two of these teams... I think I'm gonna go with team one. Um, even though I really like Ben Foster, uh, Daisy Ridley, Rami Malek, I think there's other there's more people on the top that are like close enough and more people that I'm like, I'm loving for the role. So I'm gonna go with team one. Let me know what you guys choose down below in the comments. All right, the FanCast dude. Welcome to the FanCasting Summit. So now let's take a look. Wolverine, we have Aiden Turner from The Hobbit, Unexpected Journey, and Poldark, and then Travis Fimmel from Vikings and Warcraft. Now this is a role that I can get behind for Travis. Um, I think that this would be a fantastic role for him, but also Aiden Turner. Um, I think Aiden Turner might be taller than Travis Fimmel. Hmm, I could be wrong about that, but I think Travis Fimmel is a little shorter. And he was in Vikings and Warcraft. I've seen Travis Fimmel play this role a little bit more. So I'm going to go with Travis on this. But I really do like Aiden Turner for this. This is a good option. All right, next we have Gambit, Gaspar Duliel from Hannibal Rising and St. Laurent. And then Jared Padalecki from Supernatural and Friday the 13th. I really, really like Jared Padalecki for this role. And I think visually, he might even look more like Gambit than, than Gaspar, which is saying a lot. Gaspar looks spot on um ooh, this is so tough man uh, i'm gonna go with 
Jared Padalecki for this one. But again, it's 100% a win for Gaspar too if he gets it. So let me know. All right, Rogue, we have Lindsey Fonseca from Agent Carter and Nikita, and then Elizabeth Gillies from Dynasty and Killing Daddy. Wow, these are really good picks. Um, I think that, hmm, both of these are really good. And I like that you picked a picture of Elizabeth Gillies with her like sleeves covering her arms and they're green. It's like, it looks like Rogue. Um, I don't know, perhaps. I'm gonna go Elizabeth Gillies on this one. This one's close though. And honestly, for if, if it comes down to this decision for like the end, end of the teams and picking the teams, it doesn't matter to me because both of these are great. All right, next, Storm. We have Gugu Mbatha-Ra from the Cloverfield Paradox and Free State of Jones. And then we have Yaya Da Costa from Chicago Med and Chicago Fire. I'm gonna go with Yaya Da Costa on this one. I think her face shape is perfect for Storm and her hair, and I think she's just great for it. All right, next we have Nightcrawler, Bill Skarsgård from It and Deadpool 2, and also Rami Malek from Bohemian Rhapsody and Mr. Robot. This one's really good. If I had to choose between the two of these, I would go Bill Skarsgård. I think he looks so much like a Nightcrawler. I think his build um, is like a Nightcrawler, and I think he would be able to do the I'm sure both of them could play the role. It's not really a matter of acting. Both of them are great A-list actors. So I would go Bill Skarsgård. Let me know what you guys think down below. Colossus, we have Danila Kozlovsky from Viking, not Vikings the show, but Viking the movie, and In the Hood, and Alan Richardson from Titans and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Between the two of these guys, as much as I like Danila for this role, and he is a good choice, I'm gonna go Alan Richardson. So Shadowcat, we have Daisy Ridley from Star Wars The Force Awakens and Murder on the Orient Express and Haley Steinfeld from Bumblebee and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I am gonna go with Daisy Ridley because I think that Rogue should be a little bit more mature. That's what I think. So I'm gonna go with Daisy. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not for Rogue. This is Shadowcat. What am I talking about? No, for Shadowcat, it's definitely Haley Steinfeld. Do you see what I did there? I just threw all of you guys off. So that was what that was what happened. That was a test. Haley Steinfeld for Shadowcat. Next, we have Jubilee, Emmy Takai from <laughs> these are these are Japanese movies I've never seen. Ruruni Kenshin Origins and Ruruni Kenshin Kyoto Inferno. I've never seen those. I'm going purely on looks. And also Ellen Wong from Glow and Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Between the two of these, I'm going Ellen Wong. Next up, we have Mystique, Catherine Winnick from Vikings in the Dark Tower, and Sophia Batella, Kingsman and Atomic Blonde. Now, I have cast Catherine Winnick in a few things already. So there's a couple other things that I think she should play. However, she is great for this role. I'm gonna go with Sophia because I've got other ideas for Catherine, but if you guys don't have that stipulation, and if you wanna go just on this fan casting, pick whoever you want. Let me know if you guys think Catherine should take it over Sophia. All right, Sabretooth. We have Logan Marshall Green from Upgrade and Spider-Man Homecoming. He played uh, the first Shocker. And then also James Preston Rogers from Alpha Wolf and Max Payne. Now I like Logan Marshall Green, but I think to me, he's more of a, he's more of a Wolverine than a Sabretooth. And James Preston Rogers literally is Sabretooth. So I'm going with James Preston Rogers. Now let's look at the teams. First team, Aiden Turner, Gaspar Uliel, Lindsey Fonseca, Gugu Mbathura, Bill Skarsgård, Danila Kozlovsky, uh, Daisy Ridley, Emmy Takai, uh, Catherine Winnick, and Logan Marshall Green for Team 1. Now, Team 2 is Travis Fumel, Jared Padalecki, Elizabeth Gillies, Yaya DaCosta, Rami Malek, uh, Alan Richson, Haley Steinfeld, Ellen Wong, Sophia Batella, and James Preston Rogers. Mm, between the two of these, I have no choice. I have to go with Team 2 on almost every pick. I think it's team two for me all across the board, but they're really, really good choices on team one. Let me know if you guys disagree and if you guys like team one better. All right, Dream Fancast, welcome back to the Fancasting Summit. Let's take a look. All right, Wolverine. We have Daniel Radcliffe from Horns and Harry Potter. And then we also have James McAvoy from X-Men, Dark Phoenix, and Glass. Between the two of these, I've already said in this in a matchup that the same exact characters and, and actors, um, Daniel Radcliffe is my choice, so that's who I'm gonna go with. Next, we have Gambit, Matt Smith from Doctor Who and the Crown, 
fantastic actor. And then Matt Bomer from Doom Patrol and White Collar. Um, he's currently on a DC project, so he's tied up, which makes it unlikely. But I'm still going to choose Matt Bomer because he literally looks like Gambit. He would be perfect for Gambit. So next we have Rogue, Lily James from Baby Driver and Cinderella, and then Kristen Stewart from The Twilight Saga, and Snow White and The Huntsman. Ooh, between the two of these for Rogue, I'm going to go with Lily James. I think she has a little bit more of that Rogue look, um, Southern Belle kind of gal. And so I'm going to go with her. I'm going to go with Cinderella for that one. All right, next we have Storm, Gugu Mbatha-Ra from Beyond the Lights and A Wrinkle in Time. And we also have Yaya DaCosta from Chicago Med and, and Chicago Fire. Sh Yaya DaCosta might be my favorite pick for Storm. Um, possibly. Uh, I like Yaya DaCosta, so I'm going to go with Yaya on this one. All right, next we have Nightcrawler, Fionn Whitehead from Dunkirk and the Children Act, and then Thomas Brody Sangster from The Maze Runner and Game of Thrones. I'm going to go with Fionn Whitehead on aesthetics and acting. I think he'd be better suited for Nightcrawler, even though I love Thomas Brody Sangster. I think he's great, but for Nightcrawler, I want Fionn. All right, Florian Montianu from Creed 2, from Colossus, from, uh, and he's also from a movie called Bogot, and then also Owain Yeoman from The Mentalist and Supergirl. Um, Owain is good, but Florian, he takes it. I think Florian is freaking Colossus. Like he just is Colossus. He looks like Colossus. He acts like Colossus. Creed 2, he played Colossus, basically. He played Colossus with boxing gloves, um, powered down. That's who he was. So I'm gonna go with Florian Montiano. All right, next we have Shadowcat. We've got Haley Steinfeld, Bumblebee, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and also Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things and Velvet Buzzsaw. I am gonna go very closely. Either of these chicks could do this. I'm gonna go with Natalia Dyer, because I really like her for this role. Next, we have Jubilee. We have Piper Curta from I Didn't Do It, and Teen Beach Movie 2, and Peyton Elizabeth Lee from Andy Mack and Shameless. Between the two of these, I will go with Peyton Elizabeth Lee because of her youth and because of her aesthetic. She looks to me much more like Jubilee. So, uh, next we have Mystique, Ana de Armas from War Dogs and Blade Runner 2049, and Isa Gonzalez from Baby Driver and Alita Battle Angel. Isa Gonzalez would be awesome in this role, but Ana de Armas looks much more the role, and she's a great actress as well. So I am going with Ana de Armas. Next, we have Sabretooth, James Preston Rogers and the Ma from The Masked Saint and Pixels, and also Clive Standin from Vikings and Taken. This is a great choice. Um, I think Clive Standin is someone who is uniquely suited to play Sabretooth based on his current resume. Um, he's just, he's perfect for this role. But I'm still going with James Preston Rogers. How do you beat 6'6 six, six and as jacked as he is with the long hair, the right amount of scruffy facial hair? He's from Canada. He's literally Sabretooth. He is in fact Sabretooth. So I'm going with, I'm going with James Preston Rogers. Um, all right, next, let's take a look at the team. Team one, Daniel Radcliffe, Matt Smith, Lily James, Gugu Mbatha-Ra, Fionn Whitehead, Florian Montianu, Haley Steinfeld, Piper Curta, Anna Diarmas, and James Preston Rogers. Next team. James McAvoy, uh, Matt Bomer, Kristen Stewart, Yaya DaCosta, Thomas Brody Sangster, Owain Yeoman, Natalia Dyer, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Isa Gonzalez, and Clive Standen. Between the two of these teams, I am going with Team 1. Team 1 to me looks like a much more accurate, well-rounded team. I'm going to go there. So that's my choice. Let me know what you guys choose down below in the comments. All right, let's keep rolling. Fan casting is fun. Welcome to the Fan Casting Summit. Next up, we have, for Wolverine, we have Robert Pattinson from Twilight Saga and Good Time, and Scott Kahn from Ocean's 13 and Hawaii Five-O. People give uh, Robert Pattinson a lot of crap for, a lot of, a lot of heartache for what he did in the Twilight Saga, but he's a great actor. He's a really good actor. And he looks pretty close to the role. All you gotta do is give him the beard. His hair's almost always in that kind of like partially messed up spiked up hair so he does look a lot like he could play wolverine if i'm not mistaken i believe he's canadian as well um but scott Kahn, who is not canadian is five foot five that is very close to accurate for comic book accuracy he's 
he's a, an appropriate age for the role of Wolverine, especially if you want a younger crew for the other rest of the team. He's really good. And even if you don't, if you want a little bit more mature, he still has the, the fallback of it's a healing factor. He's probably looking the same age, even though he's much older. So it doesn't really matter. But Ocean's 13, Hawaii 5 no stranger to action. And this guy is always in great shape. Um, he is literally perfect for the role. You dye his hair and you have Wolverine. Scott Kahn is my choice, but not because I don't like Robert. Robert would be a great backup choice. I just think Scott is literally perfect for the role. He's my number one pick. Um, all right, next up we have Gaspard Uliel for Gambit, Hannibal Rising, and St. Laurent, and Jay Ryan. Jay Ryan from Beauty and the BCW and Mary Kills People. Now, Beauty and the BCW is a very interesting show. And it's interesting because of him, because of Jay Ryan and how he portrays the, the main character. I like Jay Ryan. He looks like the character. He can talk like the character. He's an Australian actor, but he can do accents pretty well. This guy is my choice. I'm going with Jay Ryan, even over Gaspard Uliel, who is already literally perfect for the role. So I'm going Jay Ryan. Next up, we have Rogue, Emma Stone uh, from The Amazing Spider-Man and La La Land, and Anna Kendrick from A Simple Favor and The Accountant, which I love. I love both of these actresses. I love both the, all the films they've been in. They're really good. But if I had to choose one of the two for this role, I would probably go with... I think maybe Emma Stone. I might go Emma Stone. Yeah, I'm going to go with Emma Stone. I'm going to commit to that. All right, next we have Storm, uh, Gugu Mbatha-Raw from The Cloverfield Paradox and The Free State of Jones, and Megan Good from My Wife and Kids and Minority Report. If I had to choose between the two of these, I like Gugu Mbatha-Raw, but I'm going to go with Megan Good. I think she's wonderful. She's funny. Um, she's sweet when she needs to be. And uh, I think that this actress is really talented. She looks the part. And it would be really cool to have her in the MCU. So for me, it's Megan Good. Next, we have Nightcrawler, Asa Butterfield from Ender's Game and The Space Between Us, and e Taryn Egerton from Kingsman and Robin Hood. I think this is a really interesting choice. I haven't seen many people casting Taryn Egerton for Nightcrawler. I would personally still go, even though he's much better for action, Taryn Egerton is, I would still go with Asa Butterfield for Ender's Game and The Space Between Us because he has that build, that long kind of lanky look to him, and I think that would be really nice. Plus, keep him a little bit on the younger side, a little bit closer to whoever's going to be your shadow cat. All right, next up, we have... Um, Colossus, Kellen Lutz from Twilight Saga and The Expendables 3, and Danila Koslovsky from Viking, not Vikings, Viking, and In the Hood. I am going to go with Danila Koslovsky because I think he's just better all around for that role. Um, I think he would be able to play that Russian accent, play the character. He's a really good choice. I know I haven't chosen him a lot because he's been going up against people like Alan Richson. He's been going up against people like Florian Montianu. Um, but to me, he's a great choice and I think he would be really good for the role. So next, next we have Shadowcat Daisy Ridley from Star Wars. You guys already know her and Odea Rush from Lady Bird and The Giver. For Shadowcat, I would, even though I love Daisy Ridley, I would go Odea Rush for her youth. I would go with Odea Rush because you need someone who's a little bit younger to play Shadowcat. That's my opinion. Um, that'd be really cool. Next, Jubilee. Peyton Elizabeth Lee from Andy Mack and Shameless and Brenda Song from The Social Network and The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Now, Brenda Song is a Disney Channel legend. She's like, she's the, she was during the early 2000s. And Brenda Song from The Social Network and The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. So... Brenda Song is a Disney Channel legend, and she has been a staple in Disney Channel for a very long time. She's no longer with Disney. However, Brenda Song, if you're going to go with an older version of Jubilee, who's not a kid, I think Brenda Song would be the best possible choice for the role. That being said, Peyton Elizabeth Lee is much more accurate. She's still a kid, and that would work in her favor. I think she's great. She's also a Disney Channel legend, so... Um, and she's also a children's TV legend. So I think for her, uh, for this role, I'm going to go Brenda Song. 
even though the accurate thing to do would be Peyton Elizabeth Lee, and it tears me to say that, but I really like Brenda Song. So I'm gonna go with Brenda Song. Ah, my eyes. All right, next up we have Raven Darkholm, we have Sophia Batella, uh, you guys already know her, and Catherine Winnick from Vikings and the Dark Tower. I love Catherine Winnick. I love her for a lot of things, and I love her for a lot of different roles. She would be a great mystique. She'd be a killer mystique. But Sophia Batella would be a savage mystique, and she would be a ruthless, merciless mystique, which would be absolutely awesome to see on screen. I'm going to go with Sophia Batella, but not by much. All right. Next up, we have, again, Clive Stanton versus James Preston Rogers. Clive Stanton would be amazing as Sabretooth. He would be so legit. Um, he's already primed for the role from his work in Vikings, but James Preston Rogers, how do you how do you top that? 6'6", six, six, Alpha Wolf, Max Payne. Uh, it's, it's basically a tie for me, but I'm gonna go James Preston Rogers because he's one of my picks. Next, let's take a look at the teams. So from fan casting is fun. We have Robert Pattinson, Gaspar Duliel, Emma Stone, Gugu Mbathu Ra, Asa Butterfield, Kellen Lutz, Daisy Ridley, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Sophia Batella, and Clive Standin. Great, great lineup. Next, we have Scott Kahn, Jay Ryan, Anna Kendrick, Megan Good, Taryn Egerton, Danila Kozlovsky, Odea Rush, Brendan Song, Catherine Winnick, and James Preston Rogers. For me, I think almost all the way across the bottom is Team 2 is my choice. I really like these lineups. Both the top and the bottom are so solid. I could choose either one of these and be happy in the MCU, but I think for me, the bottom would be ideal. So let me know what you guys think down below. All right, next up, FanCast Forever. Welcome to the FanCasting Summit. Also, follow FanCast Forever's edit and art page on Instagram at edits, or underscore edits, double underscore, forever, double underscore. So it's a little bit of a trickery that one because it's got a couple double underscores, but follow it. It's great stuff. And we're going to take a look at some of his edits here in this, in this premiere as well. So check it out. Fancast Forever has uh, Wolverine, Charlie Hunnam from Pacific Rim and Sons of Anarchy. And here's an art piece that he did from his edits page, which is pretty cool. I like that you gave him some wounds there. It's pretty sweet. It's kind of a good depictor. Um, I like that. Charlie Hunnam from Pacific Rim was a great, great character. But he's going up against my man, Scott Kahn from Ocean's 13, Hawaii 5 -0. He's literally 5'5". Five five. Um, he's, he's perfect for playing Wolverine. And even though that's a very compelling art, which I like, I'm going to go with Scott Kahn. I think he's the better choice. Charlie Hunnam's a great choice, though. Um, so for me, Scott Kahn. Um, sick edit. Gambit. We have Timothy Chalamet from Lady Bird and Interstellar. And here's an edit of him as Gambit, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I like that edit. That's nice. I like that you gave him the red eyes. That's pretty sick. And you got the hand there going on. That's really tight, man. Good, good edit. And then Jared Padalecki from Supernatural and Friday the 13th. Now, Timothy Chalamet, if you're going with a kid version of Gambit or a young adult version of Gambit, is a great, great choice. But I don't want a young Gambit. I want an older Gambit. So I'm going with Jared Padalecki, who is a awesome, awesome choice for this. Both are great, but for accuracy's sake, I'm gonna go with Jared Padalecki. Next up, we have Rogue. We've got Selena Gomez from Wizards of Waverly Place and The Dead Don't Die, which comes out in 2019. Um, and Haley Steinfeld from Bumblebee and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Between the two of these for Rogue, Huh, I might go, they're both young. I would probably go with Haley. Um, yeah, probably Haley instead of Selena. I like Selena, but I think Haley would be where I would go for that. If they're both close in age and they're both kind of young for the role, I'd probably I'd probably go or stick with Haley. Uh, even though she's much, she's much younger, but whatever. To me, that's just what it is. She looks a little bit more accurate. Next up we have for Storm, Ashley Murray from Riverdale and Alex Inc. I believe there's an edit here for Ashley Murray as Storm, which is pretty cool. I like that. That's a pretty good merge. And then we have Aja Naomi King from How to Get Away with Murder and The Upside. I like Aja Naomi King for this one. I think she looks more the role. I think her face looks more the role. Um, to me, I think Aja is is the right choice for this one because i want an older storm as well storm should be a little bit older she's one of the leading x-men 
um, she's closer in age to Professor X than she is to the rest of the team. So I think that is something that is a little bit more unique to Storm. So for me, I'd want someone that looks a little bit older and Ashley looks very young. So I'm gonna go with Aja. All right, next we have Nightcrawler, Rob Rocco from Riverdale and Supernatural. And Ezra, oh, and we have, an, we have an art here, which looks great, by the way. I like this one a lot. Um, I like that you put kind of a texture over his face. That's pretty cool. He does straight up look a lot. I'm going to go back to this picture too. He looks a lot like a Nightcrawler. He could definitely play Nightcrawler for sure. But on the flip side, your second choice is Ezra Miller. And like I said before, he's got that triangular jaw. He's got sharper features around the cheeks and around the jaw and the mouth. And... Uh, I think that you slap some elf ears on him and you literally have Nightcrawler as well. These are both very good choices. I'm gonna go Ezra Miller because I know more of his work. Um, I've seen more of his stuff and I like him a lot. So to me, he's more of that standout. So I'm gonna go there, but I like that you did the art for Rob. You're doing a lot of the art for the underdogs here and I like that, that's really cool. All right, next we have Stefan Kopicic from, De from Deadpool 2, from Deadpool 2 and Big Miracle. And then we also have Max Greenfield, who's hilarious on New Girl, and he's in the neighborhood, not in our neighborhood, literally, but he's in the, the uh, movie, The Neighborhood. And so um, I like, for this one, I like that you picked Max Greenfield, but to me, I don't see him as a Colossus, unless you mean specifically his voice. Um, but even that, to me, I would go I would go Stefan Kapicic in uh, physical form, in motion capture form, or in vocal acting form, Across the board for me, it's Stefan Kapicic. So that's my choice there. Good good choices though. And then also, Shadow Cat, Kitty Pride, we have Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things and Velvet Buzzsaw, and Anna Kendrick from The Accountant and A Simple Favor. Between the two of these, I'm gonna go with Natalia Dyer. If you want a little bit more of a mature Kitty Pride, I would go with Anna Kendrick, would be great. That'd be a great choice. But I think Natalia Dyer should be the choice, given that she's a little bit younger there. Next up, we have Jubilee, Peyton Elizabeth Lee from Andy Mack and Shameless. And we also have Ellen Wong from Scott Pilgrim vs. The World and The Circle. I really like Ellen Wong. For accuracy's sake, I'd go with Peyton Elizabeth Lee, but I really do like Ellen. So I'm going to personally go with Ellen on this one. Um, all right, next up, we have Mystique. Sophia Butella from Kingsman and Atomic Blonde. I believe we have an edit for this one. Very good. There's her with red hair and blue skin. I like that. Um, it's very easy to see her in that role. And then also Charlize Theron as an older, uh, more mature Mystique, which I also like. I think that if you're gonna have her as the team lead for the Brotherhood, it would probably be better, maybe a little bit more accurate to have an older Char uh, Charlize Theron to play that role. Charlize is a great choice. I'm probably still gonna go Sophia, but Charlize would be perfect for that. So next, um, Sabretooth, we have Triple H, Paul Michael Levesque from WWE and Blade Trinity, who looks freaking great for this. I didn't think about this guy. This guy would have been sick as as uh, Sabretooth. He's kind of got that brow too, you know, like that really like low hanging caveman brow. And, uh, and then also James Preston Rogers, who frankly to me looks the most like Sabretooth out of anybody. So even though Triple H is the most, probably one of the more unique choices, I'm gonna go with James Preston Rogers because he is Sabretooth. All right, let's take a look at the teams. Charlie Hunnam, Timothy Chalamet, Selena Gomez, Ashley Murray, Rob Rako, Stefan Kopicic, Natalia Dyer, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Sophia Batella, and Triple H. And then also we have on the team two, we have Scott Kahn, Jared Padalecki, Haley Steinfeld, Aja Naomi King, Ezra Miller, Max Greenfield, Anna Kendrick, Ellen Wong, Charlize Theron, and James Preston Rogers. For me, this is almost, almost, a no-brainer. I'm going with team two from top to bottom. I really like your team two a lot. I like your team one as well. In fact, um, I did enjoy it quite a bit. And the edits were great, by the way. I love those. So check out him on Instagram. Follow his his, his fan casting page and follow his edits page, his art page. Um, both of those are great. Uh, but I like team two. Let me know what you guys think down below. Next up, we have just another fan cast account um, with periods separating all the words. All right, so let's take a look. Dan Janjigan from The Room and Irangelis, and Michael Sarah from Superbad and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World for Wolverine. Now, I like to try to give people a chance, right? Um, so with Michael Sarah, 
I've never seen him play anything that would remotely make him feel to me like a Wolverine. He doesn't look like Wolverine. He doesn't feel like Wolverine, but he is small. So I would say Michael Sarah, if he could get freaking trim and jacked, um, like jacked, like really jacked. And then I could see him. I'd be like, maybe let's take a look. I don't personally see it, um, but I see Dan Jigian, uh, Dan Jigian, if that's how you say it, a lot more than I see Michael Sarah. And with the mask on, I think I see it a lot more in Dan as well. So I'm gonna give Dan that one. I'm gonna give that one to Dan, especially because of age. All right, next we have for Gambit, Greg Sestero from The Room and Disaster Artist. I can tell you like The Room <laughs> and The Disaster Artist, which is based off The Room. Um, Rob Weethoff from 16 Blocks and The Outside. I like uh, Rob Weethoff, uh, his look for Gambit, but I'm gonna go with Greg Sestero here. That's a cool choice. I think he would also uh, probably do a good job there. So let's take a look at the next choice here. Juliet Danielle, again from The Room. I'm seeing you, I'm, I see you bro, I see you. Texas Cotton, and then also we have Selena Gomez from Wizards of Waverly Place and Spring Breakers. Between the two of these for Rogue, Huh. Oh, this is kind of tough. I am gonna go with Selena Gomez. I think that she's got much more of that, like, um, that kind of like um, intimate kind of attractiveness appeal that you would need to bounce back off of with Gambit. I think that's probably what I would, and I know you probably you probably see that with Juliet Danielle more. I personally see that with Selena more. So I'm gonna go with Selena on this one. All right, next we have for Storm, Raven Goodwin from Good Luck Charlie and Being Mary Jane, and then also China Ann McLean from Black Lightning and then Descendants 2. Between the two of these, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't see Storm in either of these chicks. I really don't. But I would go with China Ann McLean um, a lot faster than I would go Raven Goodwin. Even though Raven Goodwin, I think she's older and that would be closer to accurate for Storm. For me, I'd go China Ann uh, for this one. Yeah, I think those are both very unique outside the box, by the way. In fact, all the picks that you've done so far have been very outside the box, so way to be unique, bro. Um, Jaden Smith for Nightcrawler, Karate Kid and The Get Down, and then Heron Atkins, who I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is a voice actor. Uh, a voice actor from Adventure Capital and Red Dead Redemption 2, the game. Um, so, I don't, I don't know if he would be good on camera unless you're gonna do a fully CGI, like full CGI, full motion capture, no on-screen presence whatsoever. Cause that could work. I could see that. Um, but if you're gonna have someone like physically there, I would go Jaden Smith. And a lot of you guys are gonna knock him. I think he's actually a good actor. Um, I don't think he's been given a lot of roles that suit him very well. I liked him in the Karate Kid when he was younger. Um, he's older now, of course. Uh, I think he would be good. I can actually see him. If you were to paint him blue and give him like the longer, a little bit like more flowy kind of curly hair, I could see him playing Nightcrawler. I could. Um, and then as a vocal actor, I could see Heron Atkins doing that from Red Dead Redemption 2. So those are unique choices, man. You you think way outside the box. I like this guy. Um, and so but I'm going to go Jaden Smith on this one. All right, next we have... Hulk Hogan, yeah, dude. Hulk Hogan from Walker, Texas Ranger and Rocky Three, And then Benjamin Byron Davis from Ant-Man and the Wasp. And again, a vocal actor from Red Dead Redemption 2, the game. I see you, dude. I see these patterns, man. The Room, the Disaster Artist, and then here with Red Dead Redemption, man. He's a, uh, I like this guy. So uh, what I'm gonna say here is that Hulk Hogan is physically suited for the role, but I would put Byron, I would put Benjamin Byron Davis in, uh, he's already in Ant-Man and the Wasp, but if you gave him the vocal role, it would be no different than like, um, than having, say, like uh, Josh Brolin, even though he's got a character that's in Deadpool. It's not the same universe, but it's still a Marvel movie. Um, you know, you have him kind of doing both roles. It's not that big a deal. So I would, I would have that happen. Or it's, you know what's more accurate? It's kind of like um, James Gunn's brother playing, uh, what was his name? Craglin, Craglin, the Ravager in Guardians of the Galaxy, and then also being the on-screen motion capture artist for Rocket Raccoon in everything. So that would be what he would do. He'd be an Ant-Man and the Wasp as one of the guys that was coming to like make sure and check up on um, on Ant-Man on his house arrest, and then also Red Dead Redemption 2 
uh, or he would just show off his vocal acting abilities. So I think I would go with Benjamin Byron Davis over Hulk Hogan, but that's pretty cool, dude. I like that. All right, next up, Alicia Silverstone from Batman and Robin, going way back here to Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Long Haul. Uh, and then Kristen Stewart, Twilight Saga, and Snow White and the Huntsman for Shadowcat. So for Shadowcat, between the two of these, Alicia Silverstone is a little bit older at this point. She's actually a lot older than Kristen Stewart. I like Alicia Silverstone. I think she would be great, but I think for this particular role, it's a little too old. I'm going to go with Kristen Stewart, in my opinion. But you guys let me know down below if you guys disagree, if you think Alicia Silverstone should have that role. Because I would love to see her make a resurgence in comic books. All right, next. Jubilee. We have Brenda Song from The Social Network and The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. And we also have Kelly Marie Tran from Star Wars The Last Jedi. And I'm so and sorry for your loss. So between the two of these, I love Brenda Song. She's one of my picks. But Kelly Marie Tran is a good actress. Now, everyone basically hated her character in The Last Jedi. But... She didn't deserve that hate. I made a whole video on this. You guys can go back and check out if you want. It's a little bit, it's one of my older videos. But um, Kelly, Mar Kelly Marie Tran didn't deserve the hate. The writers deserve the hate. The writers wrote a garbage character with a garbage storyline that went nowhere, with a garbage narrative that took up all the time in the world. And, and it, it basically was a hindrance to the whole film, her character. She didn't have a, a say in how the character was played. She was a fan that basically they, were, they said, hey, we want more... We want more diversity in, in Star Wars, as if there isn't. And then they were like, we're gonna give a fan this role. Will you take the role? Who among us would not have taken that role? I would have taken the role, you would have taken the role? Anyway, so like, she took the role. She didn't have a say in how the character was played out. She just had to play the character out. You know what I mean? So I like Kelly Marie Tran. I didn't like her character, but I liked her. Um, so I think she's a good actress. I would go with her because she's younger than Brenda Song. So I would go with her. And that's why. So next, Mystique. <laughs> you got Kim Kardashian here, Keeping Up with the Kardashians and Disaster Movie. And Sofia Coppola from Star Wars The Phantom Menace and The Godfather Part 3. I will be honest. I think that if you put Kim Kardashian in any film that has like lines or like action, it will be a disaster movie. <laughs> That's a personal like opinion, you know, I know that you will probably feel differently because you obviously cast her in this, but I can see why you picked her. She looks like a mystique until you get to her hips and then there's no way she's doing a roundhouse kick to anybody. You can't even like lift your leg that high backwards because there's too much butt in the way. But anyway, I think that for her, um, I, for this role, I would certainly go Sofia Coppola. She's a real actress. She's a real actress. She's not just... Um, someone you put in your movie to get a laugh or a rise or to get some attention or whatever. It's She's an actual actress and I think she would do well in the role. So that's my choice. John Barrowman from Doctor Who for Sabretooth and Arrow and also Matt Bomer from Doom Patrol and White Collar. These are really cool. I love Matt Bomer, but I also love John Barrowman from Arrow and I think John Barrowman actually does kind of look. I didn't see this until you cast this guy, but if you were to give him that facial hair and you were to dye his hair blonde, he would look a lot like Sabretooth. He's got he's got like that kind of grisly like look at his look at his smile. He looks like he's secretly evil, you know? And we feel that way because we've seen Arrow, of course. But I actually got to meet the guy in person. Shook his hand. But um Yeah, this uh I would go John Barrowman for this one. He's a big guy too, he's really big. And that would be really great for playing Sabretooth. So I'm gonna go with John Barrowman. Great choice there, man. Alright, so let's take a look at the roster, alright? So we have Team One, Dan Janjigian. Greg Sestero, Juliet, Danielle, Raven Goodwin, Jaden Smith, Hulk Hogan, Alicia Silverstone, Brenda Song, uh, Kim Kardashian, and John Barrowman. Next team, we have Michael Cera, Rob Weithoff, uh, Selena Gomez, China Ann McClain, Heron Atkins, Benjamin Byron Davis, Kristen Stewart, Kelly Marie Tran, Sophia Coppola, and Matt Bomer. Now, as even though like I like a lot of the guys on, on the top, there's a couple guys on the bottom that I would definitely choose over the ones that are above them, but I'm going to go team one because I think for the most part across the board, I like that team better. So this is a really, really unique choice. I, I don't think you picked any one character other than the, the Jubilee characters uh, that were shared like other people had, I, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, but this is a really fun one, dude. Good job. All right. Fancast Infinity. Let's take a look. 
Uh, welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. We have number one, Richard Armitage from The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, and Captain America, The First Avenger. And number two is Charlie Hunnam from per Pacific Rim and Sons of Anarchy. I like both of these guys for the role. Richard Armitage is currently playing Wolverine in a Marvel official podcast, which is an audio only. It's no video, no video footage, no photos, nothing. It's just audio. You listen to it in your in your in on your iPod, on your phone or whatever. And you can listen to him play the voice in a in a sound only story of the wolverine on a podcast which is super cool it's really fun if you're into podcasts or into audio stories or audio books it's awesome and he's currently doing that he's doing that right now and he looks the part and he's a fan favorite he is in captain america the first avenger he's one of the the hydra agents the very first hydra agent that like bit the tooth and was like Hell hydra you know and he died but he died that's one of the pivotal thing so i think you could recycle this wonderful actor but he is very he's taller charlie hunnam is shorter so for accuracy i'd probably go charlie hunnam but i will choose richard armitage because i like him and he's doing a great job playing him right now so that's that's what i'm going with next up we have jonathan groff for gambit from american sniper and mine hunter and then lake keith stanfield from atlanta and get out so these are really really cool um i would personally probably go with Jonathan Groff, I think that he's much better suited for the role, and I think that he would um, probably play the role a little bit better. I think Lake Keith is a little bit smaller, and um, I want I want Gambit to be bigger. Obviously, one of them is white, one of them is black. To me, it's not it's not that crazy. I still want comic book accuracy. Gambit is a white dude traditionally. I would like it to stay a white dude. That's my personal opinion. I know a lot of people are going to disagree. Let me know in the comments if you disagree with that. If you want to see Lakey Stanfield play Gambit, let's hear about it. I want to talk with you guys about that. So next up, we have Rogue, uh, Emmy Rossum from Shameless and the Phantom of the Opera and Willa Holland from Arrow and Tiger Eyes. Between the two of these, I am going Willa Holland. I love Willa Holland. I think she's great. I think she was great in Arrow. She played a little bit of a complainer in the first few seasons of Arrow, but she kind of grew into a much more matured out role. And that I think was a, a huge boon to her career. Um, and I think she's gonna go places once Arrow is over. So I like Willa Holland. I'm going Willa Holland for Rogue. All right, next up, Janelle Monet from Hidden Figures and Welcome to Marwin and Anna Diop from Titans and Us. I think that Anna Diop would be a really good choice, but I think the face of Janelle Monet to me looks a little bit more like Storm. I think actually personally, I think it's just her nose, honestly. Um, I think I'm still gonna, you know what? I'm gonna still go with Anna Diop though. She's with Titans and she's with DC, so it's unlikely, but I did like her in Titans. That was the weird thing. I didn't expect to like her, um, I stood up for her on my channel, you know, like everyone was freaking out about the costumes and stuff. I was like, let's just give it a shot. Let's just watch it. And um, it ended up being really good. Now, they could have been way more comic book accurate with the costume, but it had some context. So it worked out. I liked it. And I liked her specifically. I liked her ability to act out the role. And I think she'd be great for Storm. So I'm going to go with her. Next, we have Robert Sheehan from the Umbrella Academy and Mortal Instruments City of Bones. And... Actor two is Matt Smith from Doctor Who and The Crown. I really do like Matt Smith, but Robert Sheehan would be a way better Nightcrawler in my opinion. I think he looks more like him. I think he would play the role, except for this image you chose. Does It does show off that Matt Smith has a look that would be very similar to early depictions of Nightcrawler. His head shape and jaw shape do look like Nightcrawler. So that's kind of cool. That's really cool. Um, that makes me second guess my choice, but I'm going to stick with Robert Sheehan. I like him. All right, next up, Jensen Ackles from Smallville and Supernatural. And we also have Michael Cudlitz from The Walking Dead and Band of Brothers. Um, for this role, I think I'm probably going to do, ooh, this is tough. I think I might go with Jensen Ackles. I'm going to go with Jensen Ackles for this one. Not by a lot. My one of my choices for um, the thing for Fantastic Four was Michael Cudlitz. So there's other things that I want to see him in. Jensen Ackles, I think, would be great as Colossus. Not the most ideal pick for Colossus, but I think he would also. Out of the two of these, I'd probably go with Jensen. All right, 
Next, for Shadowcat, we have Maya Mitchell from The Fosters and Good Trouble. And then we have Emma Watson from Beauty and the Beast and The Circle. Um, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. So Maya, Maya Mitchell, um, I think would be my pick here from The Fosters and Good Trouble. She seems a lot more kid-ish. I do like Emma Watson, but there's things about her things about her that I don't like as well. I don't know that she would be the best for this role, but someone like Maya Mitchell probably would be. Playing a much more youthful character, I think that would be a great choice. Next, we have Again, this is this goes back to the L and the R in the name Shioli or Shiori on IMDb. It's totally unclear whether or not it's with an R or an L, so forgive me if this is not correct. Shioli Katsuna from Deadpool 2 and The Outsiders and Kelly Marie Tran from Star Wars The Last Jedi and Sorry for Your Loss. Again, I've made my statement about Kelly Marie Tran. Um, I hated the character that she played in The, fourth, in the Last Jedi. I really did. But... I think she as an actress is totally great. She's fine. Um, and I would rather see her play a character that is better suited for her and better suited for the story. Not that everybody loves Jubilee, but at the same time, she would be better for that. I think I would go with Kelly Marie Tran for this one. All right, next up we have Alicia Vikander from The Man From U.N.C.L.E. and Tomb Raider, and then Sophia Batella from Kingsman and Atomic Blonde. This one's really difficult because um, Alicia Vikander is... Um, she was pretty good in Tomb Raider. It made a bunch of money. It was pretty good. Um, my wife is a huge um, uh, Jennifer Lopez. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, my wife is a huge fan of the classic. I forget what the actress name is from the, the first one. Angelina Jolie. Thank you. <laughs> my, my memory just reminded me. So Angelina Jolie. Jennifer Lopez. What am I thinking? Uh, Angelina Jolie was great. Um, Alicia Vikander doesn't have the same visual aesthetic. She doesn't. She's not nearly as, in my opinion, in my wife's opinion, near, not nearly as pretty. Um, but I think that she did a good enough job that she made a ton of money. And um, I think they're going to keep moving forward with that. She'd be great for this role too, but not as good as Sophia Batella. And that's why I'm choosing Sophia. All right. So next up, we have Jai Courtney from Suicide Squad Terminator Genesis and Jason Momoa from Aquaman and Game of Thrones. This one was a surprise to me because Jason Momoa is currently a major character in DC's extended universe as Aquaman. He had a massive success with the Aquaman character in the movie Aquaman. And uh, he would be really good as Sabretooth. Now, I'd want you to blonde him up. I'd want you to go full classic Sabretooth. But with Jai Courtney, you wouldn't have to do that. Jai Courtney is also in DC's universe in Suicide Squad. And Jai Courtney, I think to me, looks much more accurate visually. I think he already has that feel. Both of these guys would be skilled to play the role based on their current um, uh, resume. But I'm going to go with Jai Courtney, even though Jason Momoa is a really cool, really cool pick for this. I really like that. Good job. Let's take a look at the teams. So FanCast Infinity has Richard Armitage, Jonathan Groff, Emmy Rossum, Janelle Monae, Robert Sheehan, Jensen Ackles, Maya Mitchell, um, Shioli Katsuna, Alicia Vikander, and Jai Courtney. Next team is Charlie Hunnam, Lakey Stanfield, Willa Holland, Anna Diop, Matt Smith, Michael Cutlitz, Emma Watson, Kelly Rutran, Sophia Batella, and Jason Momoa. Between the two of these teams, I'm going to go with Team 1 because I think that Team 1 has the good enoughs and the greats, in my opinion. I think Willa Holland was a huge pull for me and Sophia Batella. But everybody else on Team 1, I think, was as good or better, in my opinion. So I like Team 1 the best. Let me know what you guys want down below. Team 1 or Team 2 for FanCast Infinity, and thank you. All right, FanCast.Frenzy. Welcome to the FanCasting Summit, my friend. Welcome back. All right, we have Tom Hardy. You guys know him already. And Keanu Reeves from John Wick and The Matrix. Now, this one's tough because... Tom Hardy is, he was the number one fan pick, clearly, to play Wolverine before he got cast as Venom. And a lot of people tapered off and said, okay, he's Venom, we don't really need him as Wolverine. But Keanu Reeves as Wolverine is an awesome idea. It is a great idea. I believe he's from Canada too, is he not? I believe he's a Canadian guy. And uh, he has, he always has the facial hair that has the chops. He's a rough, tough, fighting guy, martial artist to the max. Guy does stunts. The guy's awesome. Um, I don't know, dude. This is so tough. I'm going to go with Tom Hardy. Yes. I'm going to go with Tom Hardy. 
because I think there's other roles that Keanu Reeves could play. And I won't say those just yet, but I have those in mind. I'm thinking of you guys, we'll, we'll do another summit eventually where I'll show you guys my thoughts for that. So next, David Mezus for Gambit. That's so young. <laughs> David Mezus as Gambit is a, is a very young choice. Gotham and the Darkness and Gaspard Uliel from St. Laurent and Hannibal Rising is also really good. I'm gonna go with Gaspard Uliel from St. Laurent and Hannibal Rising because he's literally visually perfect and he's an appropriate age in my opinion. I don't personally want a Gambit that young. That's very, very young. But if you're also thinking, hey, Daniel, we're not gonna get the X-Men until, until after this next phase is complete for Marvel, right? So we're looking at probably another, I don't know, eight movies, and then we might be able to start see X, seeing X-Men come to fruition. Kevin Feige said he wants to take things one step at a time, and they already have the next five years planned out, so it'll probably be five years then that. David Mizuz will probably be the appropriate age by then. So that, to me, says he might be a viable option, but I still think yeah, it's, it's not just about age. Look at Gaspard, he's a Frenchman. He's a French actor. He speaks French, he speaks English, that's easy translation into Louisiana. So easy. He's already primed for the role. I think he's great. Perfect. Gaspard's my choice. Next, Rogue. We have Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things and Velvet Buzzsaw and Ellen Page from the Umbrella Academy and Inception. Ellen Page, to me, does not have what it takes to be Rogue. And what it takes to be Rogue is, I think, physical beauty. <laughs> I'm going to be shallow for a minute, but... You know who I, I can confirm with this is my wife, who's probably a little bit more shallow than me or any dude I know. So um, I think Ellen Page is not right for this role. I think she was great as Kitty Pride in X3. I, think, I thought that was a good choice, but Ellen Page as Rogue, I don't think works. Now, Natalia Dyer is not particularly like sh hourglass figure, but she is, I think, prettier and I don't mean to sound like mean or critical or whatever but that's just what it is I think that she would be better suited to play rogue especially with her eyes her eyes are captivating and so that I think would be very helpful so I'm gonna go with Natalia Dyer even though she's young I'm gonna go with her next up uh, let me know if you think <laughs> if you think differently if you think Ellen Page would be great for that anyway so let me know next up storm we have Amanda Steinberg uh, Amanda Stenberg uh, from The Hunger Games in Columbiana, and Emmy Raver Lampman from The Umbrella Academy and A Million Little Things. Between the two of these guys, I'm going with Emmy Raver Lampman because she looks like Storm. She looks strong. She looks capable. I think that she would be a great person to play Storm. She's young, but she could probably portray someone a little bit older, even though she's younger. So that would be good. Sorry, guys, my eyes are a little bit dry. It's allergy season, so I'm kind of squinting and blinking and blah, doing all this. So forgive me for that, guys. Anyway, Nightcrawler, we again have Timothy Chalamet from Hot Summer Nights and Lady Bird, and then Justin H. Min from Pure Genius and The Umbrella Academy. This is really unique. I've never seen anyone cast an Asian actor for Nightcrawler. And this guy, Justin H. Min, was great in The Umbrella Academy. Uh, but aesthetically, I have to go with Timothy Chalamet. Look at his face. Look at his, like his jaw is not like anybody else, dude. He's got that like, like super cut, super chiseled jaw, triangular face that looks like Nightcrawler. He would, he would be perfect. I would go with Timothy Chalamet. All right, next up for Colossus, we have Danila Kozlovsky from Vampire Academy and Viking. And also we have Elia Baskin. Do you have rent? From Spider-Man 2 and Air Force One. I would have to go with Danila Kozlovsky because I think that he is physically more imposing. He is bigger with muscles, all big bubbly shoulders. And then I think Alia is probably a little bit too old and probably not that big. So I don't think that he would be a good choice to play Colossus in uh, the MCU X-Men. I don't think that would be a good choice. I think he's a good actor, but I do not think that he could play the role. So I'm going to go with Danila Kozlovsky to play Pyotr Nikolaevich Rasputin from the motherland in Russia. That is my choice. Next up, we have Haley Steinfeld from Bumblebee Pitch Perfect 2 to play Shadowcat, and also Jessica Parker Kennedy from Black Sails and the Flash. This catches my eye here because I think Jessica Parker Kennedy is great. I think that she would be amazing to play Kitty Pride. And like I said before, Haley Steinfeld is one of the most perfect people to play Shadowcat. 
but also Jessica Parker Kennedy is great for that role too. I think if you're gonna go with age, I think uh, Haley Steinfeld is closer, but Jessica Parker looks super young. And so I'm gonna go with Jessica Parker for Shadowcat because that's a really cool choice. It's outside the box and I think that's a win. So awesome way to think outside the box. That's great. All right, next up we have uh, Jubilee, Paris Berelk uh, from Alexa and Katie and Invisible Sister, and then Kamiko Glenn from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and Orange is the New Black. Between the two of these, I would on aesthetic probably go with probably Kamiko, but she's older. She's a lot older than um, I think Paris is. So I might I might end up just going with Paris Berelk from Alexa and Katie. So I'm gonna go Paris. All right, now we have Mystique. Evan Rachel Wood, who is a fantastic actress from Westworld and True Blood, and Charlize Theron from Mad Max Fury Road and Atomic Blonde. I really, really, really like um, the uh, Evan Rachel Wood for this. I think that as a younger actress, she's one of the best options. Um, but Charlize Theron, Mad Max Fury Road, and Atomic Blonde is also great. <sighs> who do I pick? I'm gonna go with Evan Rachel Wood. I think she's great. I'm gonna, and even though Charlize Theron is one of my top picks, Evan Rachel Wood, I did not think about. She would be great. She'd be awesome for the role. I'd love to see her play that. All right, next. For Sabretooth, these are really cool. Dan Stevens from Legion, Beauty and the Beast, and Alex Skarsgård from The Le Legend of Tarzan and True Blood. Between the two of these, I would have to go with Alexander Skarsgård because of his physicality. Um, and it would be a lot easier for him to stand next to whoever's going to play Wolverine and still feel like Sabretooth. Dan Stevens would be the size of someone I would want to play Wolverine. He's smaller, and I don't think he would be particularly great for Sabretooth, even though he played Beast in Beauty and the Beast um, and his role in Legion. This guy can literally act anything. He's one of the most underrated, most talented actors in Hollywood today. Dan Stevens, but I'm going to go Alexander Skarsgård because he has to be big. He has to be someone that can look and feel like Sabretooth. You got to be accurate there. So that's who I'm going with, Alexander Skarsgård. All right, let's take a look at the teams. Tom Hardy, David Mazous, Natalia Dyer, Amanda Stanberg, if that's how you say her name, Timothy Chalamet, Danila Kozlowski, um, Haley Steinfeld, Paris Berelect, uh, <laughs> Berelk, and uh, Evan Rachel Wood, Dan Stevens. Now, team two is Keanu Reeves, Gaspard Eliel, um, Ellen Page, Emmy Raver Lampman, if I'm saying that correctly, Justin H. Min, Elia Baskin, Jessica Parker Kennedy, Kamiko Glenn, Charlie Theron, Alexander Skarsgård. Dude, this one's so tough. But I think for me, across the board, I think I'm going team one because all of them are great. All of them are, are really, really good. Um, and then I would just CGI or or do some tr visual trickery to make Dan Stevens look bigger. That's basically what I do. All right, next, Mr. Funcaster, welcome back to the Fancasting Summit. Let's take a look at your picks. First, we have Shia LaBeouf and Charlie Hunnam. Between the two of these guys, I'm gonna go with Shia LaBeouf. I think he would be better for the role. I think he is a savage. Uh, and Charlie Hunnam is too, but for me, it's Shia. Next, Gambit, we have Boyd Hallberg from... Uh, Narcos and Logan, and also Hayden Christensen from Star Wars Revenge of the Sith and Outcast. I like both these guys, but between the two of these, I'm going to have to go with Hayden Christensen. I think he's great. I think he'd do a great job playing that ladies man. And I'd love to see him in something again. I haven't seen him in a while acting. I would love to see him back. So Hayden Christensen is my pick. Good thinking. All right, next, Rogue. We have Riley Kyo. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Ku, Kyo, Kao. Cal, that would suck as a last name. And then uh, Mad Max Fury Road and Under the Silver Lake. And then also Haley Bennett from The Magnificent Seven and The Equalizer. Between the two of these, <sighs> Haley Bennett looks great for this, but I'm gonna go with Riley Keough because I think her, her eyes and her demeanor, I think seem a little bit more to me like Rogue. A little bit more southern belly to me even though Haley Bennett can play that um, Riley Keough to me seems that way so I'm gonna I'm gonna go there 
All right, next we have Storm, Sonequa Martin-Green from Star Trek Discovery and The Walking Dead, and Gugu Mbatha-Ra from The Cloverfield Paradox and Free State of Jones. I'm going to go with... Hmm... For this one, I'm going to go Sonequa Martin-Green. Next, we've got Nightcrawler, Daniel Radcliffe from Harry Potter and Horns, and also Harry Lloyd from Game of Thrones and Robin Hood. Both these guys are really talented actors, but for this role, I'm going Daniel Radcliffe. Um, he doesn't, if you were not gonna have him bulk up like crazy, he's already the right amount of fit. He is fit, but he's just not bulked. So for Wolverine, he'd have to bulk up, but not for Nightcrawler. For Nightcrawler, he's already there. And he's a talented actor who could play the role. He could definitely play German, that'd, that'd be easy enough. Um, I could probably even do German. Um, so a talented actor like himself should probably be able to do that. So I think he would have that for me. Next, let me just rub my eyes because I'm dying of allergies. Are you guys dying of allergies? Let me know in the comments. Um, Colossus, Fyodor Nikolaevich from Asputin. We have Junus Swatomo from Swatamo. That's what it is, Swatamo. From Solo, A Star Wars Story, and Star Wars The Last Jedi. If you guys don't know who he is, he plays Chewbacca. And he is a literal, he's a literal giant. This guy is huge. Uh, and he's pretty built too. He's a built guy. And then we also have Joel Kinnaman from Suicide Squad and Altered Carbon, who's also a relatively big guy. He's not the biggest guy around. And he's certainly not a Junus Suatamo. But Junus would be a great Colossus. I am going with Chewbacca for this one. Good call. I totally forgot about that guy. All right. Next up. For Shadowcat, we have Melina Weissman from A Series of Unfortunate Events, which is great, by the way, on Netflix, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then we also have actor number two, Haley Lou Richardson from Five Feet Apart and Split. Between the two of these, I'm going to go Haley Lou. Even though Melina is, I think, younger, I'm still going to go Haley Lou Richardson because I think she's a much more experienced actress, even though Melina Weissman was very, very good in A Series of Unfortunate Events. I really liked her there, but I think... Even visually, I think Haley Lou Richardson's probably better off. All right, next up. Jubilee, we have Piper Curta from I Didn't Do It and Team Beach Movie, and then Ellen Wong from The Circle and Scott Pilgrim. I'm going Ellen Wong. And Mystique, we have Anna de Armas from War Dogs and Blade Runner 2049, and Emily Blunt for The Devil Wears Prada and A Quiet Place. Holy cow, would Emily Blunt be a savage um, mystique that would be absolutely epic um but visually anna de armas would be great and i have no doubt believing that she would be able to play the role fantastically so i'm gonna go with anna de armas for this one next Sabretooth. we have clive stanton from vikings and taken and toby stevens from black sales and lost in space both these guys are great both these guys could play the role for sure Toby Stevens is an outside the box pick, but I'm gonna go with Clive Stanton because of Vikings. He, if you blonde him up, he is Sabretooth. He will do that role and he'll crush it. He'll crush that role so well. In fact, if you were to have him and Travis Fimmel together, it would, it, Vikings was like watching Wolverine and Sabretooth be brothers. That's what it was. It was awesome. So great. I wanna see it. I wanna see that again. So Clive Stanton. All right, let's look at the teams, guys. Shia LaBeouf, Boyd Hallbrook, Riley Coe, Sonequa Martin-Green, Daniel Radcliffe, Junis Swatamo, Melina Weissman, Piper Curta, Anna de Armas, and Clive Standen. And team two is Charlie Hunnam, Hayden Christensen, Haley Bennett, Gugu Mbatha-Ra, Harry Lloyd, Joel Kinnaman, Haley Richardson, Ellen Wong, Emily Blunt, and Toby Stevens. Both of these are all-star lineups, but I'm going to go with team one, and I think that most of that team is so solid, I can't pass it up. So I'm going to go there. Let me know what you guys think down below. All right, next up we have FanCast247. Let's take a look at what FanCast247, or rather, FanCast247 has 24-7. All right, Tom Hardy versus Travis Fimmel. Dude, these are both really, really good. I think the shorter individual is Tom Hardy, and both are very talented and suited for this role completely, 100%. I'm gonna go with Tom Hardy, but to be fair, Travis Fimmel, is more likely to get the role because Tom Hardy's actively playing a big Marvel name for the Sony universe in Venom. So I think it's much more likely that Travis Fimmel gets the role. So I'm gonna go... <sighs> okay, in this scenario, I'm gonna give it to him. I'm gonna go Travis Fimmel. All right, next we have Gambit, Ian Somerhalder from The Vampire Diaries and Lost, and then Nick Bateman from Ozark and Game Night. 
I'm gonna go, this one to me I think is easy. I'm gonna go with Ian Summerholder. All right, next we have Rogue. Hayden Penetier from Nashville and Heroes. And then actor number two is Dakota Fanning from War of the Worlds and Oceans 8. I, this one's also, to me, easy. I'm gonna go with Hayden Penetier. Oh, my eyes, guys. Woo! Someone give me some of that, like, uh, just in the comments, just type allergy medicine, and that'd be great for me. All right, send some of that love my way. All right, Storm, Sonequa Martin-Green, we have for the, from The Walking Dead and Star Trek Discovery, and then we also have Freema Agyeman from, from Doctor Who in New Amsterdam. I think Sine uh, Freeman is great, but Sonequa Martin-Green to me looks more like Storm, and I think she would play Storm very well. I'm gonna go with Sonequa. All right, Nightcrawler, we have Max Moff, which is a great name. And then also the incredible uh, from the Invisibles and Bridge of Spies. And then David Cross from Warhorse and the Keeper. Between the two of these guys to play Nightcrawler. Even though I think, in my opinion, David Cross is the better actor, I think Max Moff looks more the role, and that's important to me. So I'm gonna go with Max Moff. All right, next up we have Danila Kozlowski as a voice actor, specifically, um, for Viking from Viking and Vampire Academy, and then Yuri Kol Kolokolnikov. Kolokolnikov, that's how you say it. Yuri Kolokolnikov. Oh my gosh, let me do it again, one more time. Yuri Kolokolnikov. I did not do that correctly. As a voice actor from the Hitman's Bodyguard in Game of Thrones, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, between the two of these guys, I'm gonna do Danila Kozlovsky as the voice. All right. Shadowcat, Haley Steinfeld from Bumblebee, and Catherine Newton from Poke Pokemon Detective Pikachu and Blockers. I'm gonna go with Haley Steinfeld because she looks more like the role and she's, in my opinion, the more experienced actress. All right, um, Haley Kiyoko from CSI Cyber and XOXO and Ellen Wong from Scott Pilgrim vs. The World and The Circle. Between the two of these, both in looks and talent, I think Ellen Wong is the better actress and the better look for the role. So I'm gonna go Ellen Wong. All right, and then at last, or not last, sorry, we have two more. Mystique, we have Sofia Batella from Kingsman and Atomic Blonde, and then Yvonne Strahovski from Chuck and Dexter, who is great, she has great talent, but I'm still gonna go Sofia Batella. It's really hard to beat someone that almost seems born for the role. You know what I mean? Like, I think Sofia Batella basically is born for this role. Now, I think the face of Yvonne Strahovski is better, for the role of Mystique, but Sophia is pretty hard to beat. Um, perfectly experienced for this. So I'm gonna go with Sophia. That's my take there. All right, next, let's go to Sabretooth, Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy, and then Kellen Lutz from, T from Twilight and The Legend of Hercules. Between the two of these, I am going to go with Ryan Hurst. So let's take a look at the teams. First, we have Tom Hardy, Ian Summerholder, Hayden Panettiere, Sonequa Martin-Green, Max Moff, Danila Kozlowski, Haley Seinfeld, Haley Kiyoko, Sophia Batella, Ryan Hurst, and then for team two, we have Travis Fimmel, Nick Bateman, Dakota Fanning, Freema Agiman, David Cross, Yuri Kolokolovsky, <laughs> I did not say that right, <laughs> and uh, let me try that one more time, Yuri Kolokolnikov, that's how you say it, Kolokolnikov, Kolokolnikov, ah, it's so crushing, that crushes me to not be able to say it. All right, Catherine Newton, Ellen Wong, Yvonne Strakovsky, and Kellen Lutz. To me, almost entirely across the top is team one for me. So let me know if you guys disagree and you like the bottom team two. Next, we have FanCasting10. Welcome back to the FanCasting Summit. Let's take a look at your choices. Ooh, this is cool. For actor one for Wolverine, we have Colin O'Donohue from Once Upon a Time. He plays Captain Hook and What Still Remains. He would be really good in the role. But he's going up against my man, Scott Kahn. I think Scott Kahn, 5'5", the perfect age, the perfect look, the perfect build. The guy is perfect for the role of Wolverine. I got to go with Scott Kahn. But that's some outside the box thinking for Colin O'Donohue. Honestly, I probably would have pegged that guy for Gambit, but nevertheless. All right, and then for Gambit, we have Jaron Padalecki from Supernatural and Friday the 13th and Ian Somerhalder from The Vampire Diaries and Smallville. Ooh, this one's tough, dude. You don't make this easy on us. Um, I have to go with Ian Somerhalder. I think he's a little bit more of that ladies' man, and he's got those popping 
blue eyes that are just insane. And if you were to just correct those with CGI or some, you know, contacts or something like that, um, I think CGI probably be better, but nevertheless, it'll be so sick. I think he's great. Ian's my man. All right, next. Oh my gosh, dude, this one breaks my brain. All right, for Rogue. All right, we're talking about two of my favorite actresses right now. Alexandra Daddario from True Detective and Baywatch and Marie Avgaropoulos, um, I think, for, and she's from The 100 and Tracers. Dude, you do not make this easy. This is a hard, hard choice. Ooh, I'm gonna have to go with Alexandra Dario. If I have to make a choice, look, both of these are winners. Both of these would crush this role. Both of these have what it takes to be that like love appeal that like you want to be in that relationship. Her and Gambit are constantly teasing each other. He wants to be with her regardless of the consequences. She wants to be with him, but she knows the consequences and she can't let it happen. It's literally self forbidden love. That's what it is here. Either of these ladies would be great for this, but Alexandra Daddario, I think has the edge a little bit on that. All right, so let's keep moving. Next up, Megan Tandy uh, from Piranha 3DD and Teen Wolf, and then also Kat Graham from The Vampire Diaries and 17 again. If I had to pick between the two of these, I think I might have to go with Kat Graham. Um, I think she looks a little bit more the role to me. So I would I would go with Kat Graham on this one. Next, let's go Brandon Laraquente from 13 Reasons Why and Max Steel. And then Timothy Granad Granaderos, if I'm saying that correctly, from Tagged and The Twin. So if I had to choose between the two of these, I might personally go with Timothy. I'm gonna just say Timothy because I think he might, might do better, possibly. I don't know most, I, both of these guys, I don't really know. Uh, I didn't see 13 Reasons Why, I didn't see any of these things on, on the list, but based on looks, I might just go with Timothy. All right, and then from, it's kind of a coin toss, that last one. So Colossus, Alan Richardson from Titans and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and also Tom Hopper from the Umbrella Academy and Black Sails. This is interesting to me because I don't see this guy come up a lot, but Tom Hopper was awesome in the Umbrella Academy, and the guy is huge. You guys jacked now obviously in umbrella academy they really out they did it with like a costume where he looked like a freaking gorilla man it was insane um but his head shape too is very much like colossus not as sharp as alan richson but he i think is a bigger guy <sighs> this is tough this is tough i'm gonna go i'm gonna stick with alan richson because i like the guy i know his work um and he would be great in the role but the Umbrella Academy was awesome, and Tom Hopper was a huge reason why, and uh, he looks like Colossus. He would totally do it justice as well. So both these are wins. Next, we have Haley Steinfeld for Shadowcat, and then also Elisa, Alicia Debnam Carey from The 100 and Fear the Walking Dead. I, I like The 100, but I'm not a huge fan of Alicia Debnam Carey. I like Haley Steinfeld, and I will go with Haley Steinfeld because of looks and because I like her as an actress better. So I'm gonna go with her. All right, next we have Arden Cho from Teen Wolf and Mega Python versus Gatoroid, which I mean, how could you not love a movie called Mega Python versus Gatoroid? <laughs> or Brenda Song from Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior and The Social Network. I, I would probably go Brenda Song. I really like Brenda, I think she's better for the role. All right, and then for Mystique, these are cool, all right? So I see you here with a couple castings from the 100. Uh, Eliza Taylor from the 100 and Thumper, and then Nina Dobrev from XXX or Triple X Return of Xander Cage and The Vampire Diaries. I'm gonna go with Eliza Taylor from the 100. I think she would be awesome as Mystique. That would be so cool to see. Um, and I don't know much of Nina no Dobrev, so it'd be a risk for me to just say that. So I'm gonna go with Eliza Taylor. All right. Next, we have Joe Manganiello from Rampage and, Sa and Sabotage and Clive Standen from Vikings and Taken. Now, Joe Manganiello is currently in DC's Justice League. He's, if you haven't seen it, it's too late. I'm gonna spoil the end credit, just the end credit. Um, he, was, he plays Deathstroke. So Deathstroke shows up in the end credit of Justice League. He, they're supposed to make some stuff with him in it. Um, they haven't announced anything just yet, but he would do a really good job playing Sabretooth, although, Based on a, his face, 
Clive Standen, and both of them are giants. Both of them are jacked out of their mind. And uh, Clive Standen, I think, is the better choice for Sabretooth. So I'm going to go Clive. Now let's look at the list. Team one, Colin O'Donoghue, Jared Padalecki, Alexander Daddario, May Megan Tidi, uh, Tandy, sorry, Brandon Laquent Lara Quente, uh, Alan Richson, Haley Steinfeld, Arden Cho, Eliza Taylor, and Joe Manganiello. All right, team two is Scott Connie and Summer Holder, Marie Avgaropoulos, Kat Graham, Timothy Granadero, Gran Granaderos, Tom Hopper, Elisa Devon Carey, Brenda Song, Nina Dobrev, and Clive Sandin. I'm going to have to go with team two for this one because Scott Conn, Ian, Marie, Kat, Timothy, Tom, and Brenda Song and Clive Sandin. I think only... Only Alicia Debnam and Nina were not like wins for me. So I'm going to go with team two. Even though there's some sick, awesome picks on the top. Al Jared Padalecki, Colin O'Donoghue, uh, Alexander Daddario, Alan Richardson, Haley Steinfeld, I Eliza Taylor, and Joe Manganiello would be sick as well. So, but it's team two for me. All right. Reimagined Fancast. Welcome, brother, to the Fancasting Summit. Uh, welcome back. All right. We have Tom Hardy and Taylor Kitsch. John Carter and Lone Survivor. So I am going to go with Tom Hardy, but Taylor Kitsch would be freaking insane and awesome as as Wolverine as well. I think he's a little taller than I would want for my Wolverine, and t and Tom Hardy's a little bit shorter, I believe. I think he's like six foot, and I think Taylor Kitsch is like six one or something, six two. So I'm gonna go with Taylor Kitsch. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go with Tom Hardy. That's my choice. All right, let's look at Gambit here. Bill Skarsgård from Deadpool 2 and It, and Israel Broussard from To All the Boys I Loved Before and Happy Death Day. Between the two of these, I think both of these guys are outside of the box. I think I, I have never seen Bill Skarsgård play like a handsome dude. You know what I mean? I've never seen him play someone that's like a, a charmer, a ladies' man. I haven't seen that yet. And Israel has a little bit of a charm to him. It's a little different, but he has that charm. I would probably go Israel for this one. But Bill, I think if given that opportunity, if I could see him, maybe there's something you need to refer me to, a movie, a show or something, where he plays kind of like a romantic ladies, ladies man kind of guy. Point me in that direction. I might pick him over Israel if I could go back in time. But for now, I'm going Israel. All right. Now let's look at Rogue. These are awesome. So... First, we have Elizabeth Gillies from Vacation and Dynasty. And we, then we have Cameron Bikandova from Gotham. She plays Cat Girl, or Catwoman, sorry, and, um, and Girl House. Or rather, she plays Selena Kyle. I am going to go with Elizabeth Gillies on looks. And I'm going to go with Elizabeth Gillies on her um, personality. I think it's a little closer. I can see where you're coming from, from Cameron Bikandova. But... Elizabeth Gillies is my choice. Great choice, by the way. All right. Storm, we have Sonequa Martin-Green from Star Trek Discovery and The Walking Dead. And then we have Nathalie Emanuel from Game of Thrones and Furious 7. I'm going to go with Sonequa Martin-Green based on looks. And in my opinion, I've, I've seen Star Trek Discovery. I've seen The Walking Dead. I like her in those. And um, I've, seen, uh, I've seen Furious 7, but I don't really remember her. So to me, it's not like she left an impression on me. So I'm going to go with Sonequa Martin-Green. All right. Um, Nightcrawler. We have Iwan Rion from Game of Thrones and Inhumans, which is almost nobody saw that. I saw it, but you guys probably saw it too because you're nerds like me. But uh, he, that was a short-lived series that Marvel did not put enough budget into. They did not market, and they did not put a lot of effort into because they knew the Fox deal was going to be coming anyway. Um, and they were going to get the X-Men back and then they didn't want to invest a bunch of time into the Inhumans. So Alex Wolf is the other guy. Uh, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle and Hereditary. If you guys, little known fact about Alex Wolf, he's one of the kids from the Naked Brothers band on Nickelodeon. Um, they were like the two, like they were the brothers that were in that band, the two brothers, Naked Brothers band. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was the drummer. But, um, you know, they're all grown up now and he's an actor. I don't know what his brother's doing, but... Alex Wolf was in Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, which was great. Um, I would go Ewan Rion on this one. I think he's better for the role. He looks he looks like he could play that part. Um, even though the chin of Alex Wolf is a little bit more accurate, I would probably still go with Ewan Rion. All right, next up we have 
Colossus, Alexander Skarsgård uh, from The Legend of Tarzan and True Blood, and Alexander Ludwig from The Hunger Games and Lone Survivor. Both of these guys are awesome. Alexander Ludwig is also in Vikings. Um, I would go Alexander Skarsgård. He's a bigger dude. Both these guys are big. Both these guys are built. But I'm going to go Skarsgård because um, I think he's more... He, he feels more like Colossus to me than Alexander Ludwig, Ludwig does. Even though he's big, he's a big guy, um, Skarsgård is the bigger man. All right, next up, we've got Natalia Dyer, Stranger Things in Velvet Buzzsaw, and Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones and New Mutants. I think that it's a shame that New Mutants is just kind of getting tossed away. Maybe it sucks, maybe that's why they're trying to bury it. I hope, I hope that's not the case, I hope it's awesome. But New Mutants, um, she's in that, I would hope um, that they put Maisie Williams to good use. And I, I can see her as Kitty Pride, but Natalia Dyer is awesome. And she would be great, great in that role. She's a personal favorite of mine. So I'm going Natalia Dyer. All right, and Jubilee, we have Christina Masterson from Power Rangers Megaforce and Truth or Dare, and then Paris Berelect from uh, Alexa and Katie, Invisible Sister. For me, I like um, Christina Masterson from Power Rangers Megaforce and Truth or Dare. Uh, I think she looks a little bit more the role than Paris does. And um, a little bit older, but nevertheless, she still looks young. And I think she could play that role. So I'm going to go with Christina. All right. And now we're at Mystique. We've got Emma Stone from Amazing Spider-Man 2 and La La Land. And we have Levin Rambin from Grey's Anatomy and Gone. This is a really good matchup, but I like Levin for this one. Levin Rambin is a great choice that I never thought of. I think she would be awesome. And I, I hope that they give her that choice because that is really, really cool. She would do wonders in that role. All right. Next up, we have Sabretooth, Victor Creed. We've got Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy and Charles Halford from Constantine and Bad Times at the El Royale. Both of these guys are really good in the role. A personal favorite choice of mine is Ryan Hurst. So I am going to choose Ryan Hurst, but that is really good thinking. Charles Halford is a great choice if Ryan Hurst can't make it. All right, now let's look at the teams. We've got Tom Hardy, Bill Skarsgård, Alexander Daddario, Sonequa Martin-Green, Iwan Rion, Alexander Skarsgård, uh, Natalia Dyer, Christina Masterson, um, Amanda Seyfried, oh, I'm sorry, that's not accurate. Um, that should say Emma Stone, and uh, Ryan Hurst. And we also have Taylor Kish, Israel Brissard, if I'm saying that correctly, Cameron Bikendova, Nathalie Emmanuel, Alex Wolf, Alexander Ludwig, Maisie Williams, Paris Berelk, uh, Levin Rambini and Charles Halford. So between the two of these teams, I am going to go with team one. I think I, for the most part, liked almost every single person on team one more than the other choice, except for Mystique. Um, and I think Gambit, but it's close. So I like team one. Let me know what you guys think down below. And these are some wicked cool choices. Reimagined fan cast, always bringing a reimagined concept to fan casting. I love it. All right, next up, we've got Correct Rankings Fan Cast. Welcome to the summit. My man going for that Pablo Schreiber again. I love that he's a good actor. He's a talented actor. But the guy is six foot six. If you guys didn't know this, he's the actual brother, the half brother, or I think he's a step brother. So I think he's either a step or a half brother of the guy who played the last saber tooth, Leave Schreiber um, in Wolverine Origins. So he's the actual brother of that guy. Liev Schreiber's a big dude. I think he's like 6'3". This guy's six, like 5 or 6'6 six, six or something like that. He's a giant. He's playing Master Chief in Halo. <laughs> he's going to be huge. And I I can see him playing Wolverine as skill-wise. But size-wise, this guy is a giant. You couldn't, you couldn't find anybody to play Sabretooth against this guy. You couldn't do it. Um, it'd have to be a CGI. And it'd have to be like one-on-one -on -one with no other partners next to him. Like Cyclops would be a dwarf compared to Wolverine. And that I don't think is cool. So Pablo is a great actor. I don't think he's right for this one. I'm going to go Zach McGowan from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in the 100. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is in the MCU, but it's on a technicality. It's on a hinge, guys. It's downstream. MCU is up here. All the movies, all the other stuff that happens is right here. And then whatever happens affects Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Wait, it's down the line. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. does not really get to affect 
upstream into the MCU. So if you're saying, hey, Zach McGowan's in the MCU already, it's like, yes, but kind of. Kevin Feige does not want those shows to be in the MCU. He wants them separate, which is why you never see them enter into the movies. There was like one reference one time to the helicarrier or something like the, the flying um, shield base that went like, uh, like it was being like piloted by a friend or something. Um, in a, I think, what was that, Age of Ultron or Winter Soldier or something like that. Um, there was like one reference upstream from the show to the, to the movies. That was it, one. And everything else is downstream. So it technically is in the MCU, but it's on a technicality. And I would hate to see this guy go to waste. He's a great actor. He would be a great Wolverine. That was a lot to say, but sorry about that. All right, so Gambit. Channing Tatum from G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. And he's also currently in Gambit, which is an in-production, status unknown film set to be released in 2020. And it's updated. It was updated right after the Fox deal went through. The Fox deal went through, I believe it was uh, March 20th. And on March 28th, after the deal went through, they decided to update the production status to in production. So they're still trying to make this movie. They're still making Gambit and Channing Tatum is still cast to play the role. So technically, I think he is the MCU's Gambit. And I think he's great for the role. So Garrett Hedlund, also great for the role, but I'm going Channing Tatum, not just because he technically is the MCU Gambit, but because I think he should be the MCU Gambit. I like him. I, I've always liked him for the role. All right, next up, we've got for Rogue, Alexander Daddario from Baywatch and San Andreas and Daisy Ridley from Star Wars and Murder on the Orient Express. I really like Daisy Ridley but I am 100% going Alexander Daddario for this. She looks like the comic book rogue. She just straight up does. Her like face, body, personality, like she could do it. Everything, she just needs the accent. Give her the accent and you got it. That's it. And the streak of hair, that's it. All right. Storm, Janelle Monae from Hidden Figures and Moonlight and Carrie Washington from Django Unchained and Fantastic Four 2005. If you guys don't remember in 2005, she played in the Fantastic Four. She was... Um, I think her name is Alicia Masters, and she's the love interest to The Thing. She's also the daughter of a well-known Fantastic Four villain, and if that's going to be a spoiler for you guys, I won't say who it is. You can do your research, but um, she was in that. It's not MCU canon, so she's open to play that whatever. I think she would be a great Storm. I'm probably going to go Janelle Monet though. Janelle Monet for Storm on this one. All right. Next for Nightcrawler, Bill Skarsgård and Timothy Chalamet. Again, on age, if we want an older Mystique, we can have an older uh, Nightcrawler. And I think Bill Skarsgård would be great for that. If we're going a little bit younger, I think Timothy Chalamet is your guy. And it would make sense because you gotta, you gotta make sure that the gap makes sense for Mystique to have a kid, you know what I mean? And have him be this age, so. Because of that, I might go either way. Both these guys are perfect for the role, but I'm gonna go with Timothy Chalamet on this one. All right, next up, let's go. Let's take a look. Kevin Durand for Colossus from Lost and X-Men Origins Wolverine, perfect. And Alexander Skarsgård from True Blood and Tar Legend of Tarzan, also great. I'm gonna go with Kevin Durand. Next up, we've got Shadowcat. We've got Maya Mitchell from The Fosters in Good Trouble and Haley Steinfeld from The Edge of 17 and True Grit. I, for this one, either of these could work, but I'm gonna go with Haley Steinfeld. All right, next. For Jubilee, we have Jamie Chung from The Gifted and Gotham, and we also have Ellen Wong from The Circle and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Now, if I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, Jamie Chung is also in Once Upon a Time, and I think that she would be really great for this, but she's in The Gifted, I kind of want the, kip, the Gifted to keep going. I really like The Gifted. I'm going to go with Ellen Wong for this one. All right, next up. Yvonne Strahovski for Mystique and Dakota Johnson from How to Be Single in Fifty Shades of Grey for Mystique. For this one, I'm going to go with Yvonne Strahovski. I think she's better suited for the role. And um, yeah, I think I would like to see her play Mystique more. And last, we have Liev Schreiber from X-Men Origins Wolverine, who is, again, the shorter brother to Pablo Schriever. Remember that. He's shorter than his brother, Pablo Schriever, who is right now being offered up as a Wolverine option. Keep that in mind. And then 
uh, Toby Stevens from Black Sales and Lost in Space, who's also a big guy. Between the two of these, we've already gotten Leif Schreiber. I would love to see him come back, but I'd like to see him come back as a more comic book accurate uh, Sabretooth. Although I will say, I don't think Marvel's gonna go with that. They wanna reboot completely. So Toby Stevens is likely to get it. And I do think that I would like to see Toby Stevens get the role more. So I'm gonna go Toby Stevens. Now let's take a look at the lineup. Pablo Schriever, Channing Tatum, Alexander Daddario, Janelle Monae, Timothy Chalamet, Kevin Duran, Maya Mitchell, Ch Jamie Chung, Yvonne Strahovski, and Liev Schreiber. That's team one. Team two is Zach McGowan, Garrett Hedlund, Daisy Ridley, Kerry Washington, Bill Skarsgård, Alexander Skarsgård, um, Haley Steinfeld, Ellen Wong, Dakota Johnson, and Toby Stevens. I think you're gonna get your wish, buddy. I'm gonna go with team one. <laughs> We're gonna pick the Schreiber brothers and company. And I think that that's a really good lineup, but I would probably, I would probably flip Wolverine and Sabretooth um, if I had my choice, but I really do like team one, good choice. And I do have love for Pablo. I can't wait to see him in Halo. All right, next up, FanCast Geek. Thank you for joining the FanCasting Summit. First up, we have Kit Harrington for Wolverine, Game of Thrones, and Gunpowder. I think he's like 5'8", so it's a good height. And then Scott Eastwood, who's taller. I think he's like six foot or six one or something. Suicide Squad and Pacific Rim Uprising. I would choose Kit Harrington because of size. He's got a solid build. Um, he's got darker hair. He looks more the part. I would choose Kit. I would like to see Kit play Wolverine. Now for Gambit, Taylor Kitsch from Friday Night Lights and X-Men Origins Wolverine. And then Ga uh, Gaspard Uliel from Hannibal Rising and St. Lawrence. Taylor Kitsch did play uh, Gambit in Wolverine Origins. I would like to see Taylor Kitsch get a chance to play something else. And I would like to see Gaspard get the role of Gambit because I think he's right for the role. So I'm going Gaspard. Next, Lily James for Rogue from Cinderella and Baby Driver and then Daisy Ridley from Murder on the Orient Express and Star Wars The Force Awakens. I am gonna have to go with Lily James for this one. Next, let's go Storm. We have Kiki Lane from If Beale Street Could Talk and Captive State. And then we also have Yaya DaCosta from Chicago Med and Chicago Fire. I think Kiki Lane is close, but Ki but Yaya DaCosta is perfect for the role. I'm gonna go with Yaya. Hey, let me rub my eyes, cause I'm dying. I'm dying, master. Sorry, that was my Ahsoka impression from Star Wars Clone Wars. All right, Bill Skarsgård for Nightcrawler, Castle Rock, and Thomas Brody Sangster, and the Maze Runner, uh, and Game of Thrones, that's what he's from. So between the two of these for Nightcrawler, I'm going Bill Skarsgård. I think he's much better suited for the role. And he's a little closer to a middle age range where he could play someone younger, but he also can play a more mature Nightcrawler if need be. So I'm gonna play him instead of Thomas Brody Sangster. All right, next for Colossus, we have Liam Hemsworth from Isn't It Romantic and The Hunger Games. And Alan Richson from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Titans. Between the two of these, I'm gonna go Alan Richson because I think his build is much closer. Um, general size, approximately the same, him and Liam Hemsworth, but I think his head is a better fit for, for Colossus. So I'm gonna go Alan Richson. All right, next, Shadowcat. We have Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things and Velvet Buzzsaw and Haley Seinfeld from Bumblebee and Edge of 17. These are my picks, by the way, um, which I'll show you guys at the end, but Natalia Dyer, I think is my choice. So I'm gonna go with Natalia Dyer. All right, next we have Jubilee, Tiffany Espenson from Earth to Echo and Spider-Man Homecoming, which is an MCU film. She's already in the MCU. And Piper Curter from, or Curda from Ant Farm and Teen Beach Movie 2. If you had told me that she wasn't in the MCU and she actually wasn't, I would pick her. But I'm gonna go with Piper Curta because she's available and she's not in the MCU. All right. Mystique, we have Natalie Dormer from Captain America the First Avenger in Game of Thrones, and then we also have Charlize Theron from Atomic Blonde and Mad Max Fury Road. I got lots of love for Natalie Dormer, but Charlize Theron is also perfect for the role, and it would allow her to be the mother of Bill Skarsgård, which is the person I want for Nightcrawler. So that's gonna be who I'm gonna pick, Charlize Theron. All right, next up we have Jai Courtney from Suicide Squad, Terminator Genesis to play Sabretooth. And then we also have James Preston Rogers from Pixels and Outlander to play Sabretooth. Between the two of these, I must, must go with James Preston Rogers. It only makes sense he was born for the role. 
All right, now let's look at the teams. Team one, we have Kit Harrington, Taylor Kitsch, Lily James, Kiki Lane, Bill Skarsgård, Liam Hemsworth, Natalie Dyer, uh, Tiffany Espenson, Natalie Dormer, and Jai Courtney. For team two, we have Scott Eastwood, Gaspar Deliel, Daisy Ridley, Yaya DaCosta, Thomas Brody Sangster, Alan Richardson, Haley Steinfeld, Piper Curta, Charlize Theron, and James Preston Rogers. I think I'm gonna have to go with team two here because a lot of the secondary choices that I didn't pick are close enough and talented enough and good enough for the role that I actually still like them a lot. And then I really love the picks that I had chosen. So I'm gonna go with team two. All right, ultimate fan cast. Welcome to the fan casting summit. We have first Tom Hardy from Venom in the Dark Knight Rises and Daniel Radcliffe from Harry Potter and Horns. This will probably surprise you guys. Daniel Radcliffe would be great in the role. He needs to bulk up. He needs to bulk up a lot. So if he could do that, like an asterisk, Daniel Radcliffe, yes, with an asterisk. If he could bulk up, give him like a year or two or five to bulk up, this guy would be awesome to play Wolverine. But I'm probably gonna choose Tom Hardy because Tom Hardy is already ready for the role and I would like to see him play the role. So there we go. All right, Gambit, Alexander Skarsgård, Legend of Tarzan and True Blood, and then Ben Barnes, The Chronicles of Narnia and Prince Caspian, and The Punisher on Netflix. So this guy killed it in the Netflix Punisher, which is Marvel, and it technically is the MCU. Technically, just like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the movies are up here, and the show, the storylines, they start to leak down, and then the shows get to bounce off that and reference that. Nothing goes the other way. So technically, all the Netflix shows just got canceled, so he's available again. I don't know if Marvel would recycle him, but if they could, I would like to see Ben Barnes play Gambit over Alexander Skarsgård. All right, next up we have Rogue, Emma Watson from Beauty and the Beast in the Circle and Cameron Bikondova. I like this actress. I don't know what it is. I think it's probably her eyes to me. Even though they're pretty, they seem so far. They seem kind of far apart to me. <laughs> and that's kind of shallow, I understand that. Uh, I'm not proud of it, but whatever. I'm gonna go with Emma Watson. Not because I think she's perfectly great for the role, but because whatever it is about her, to me, seems a little bit visually off-putting. And uh, I think Emma Watson's a little bit older and I want an older rogue, so there's more to it than that. But to me, I'm gonna go with Emma Watson. All right, let me know what you guys want down below, by the way. Maybe you guys got more love for Beacon Dova. All right, for Storm, we got Freema Agimon from Doctor Who and New Amsterdam, and then Kiki Palmer from Aquila and the Bee and the Long Shots. From between the two of these, I'm gonna go with Freema Agimon. I think she looks more the role, and she would play a much more savage Storm. Uh, wiser, a little bit older looking, would be great. Kiki, to me, seems like a kid, and so I would not choose Kiki Palmer. All right, Nightcrawler. This is, this is really cool. We got Jared Leto from Suicide Squad and Morbius in the Venom universe. So he's currently with DC and Sony. Um, and then Timothy Chalamet uh, for Interstellar and Beautiful Boy. I don't think it's likely we will ever get Jared Leto in a Marvel film for many, many years. But I would probably choose Jared Leto for Nightcrawler. He looks like a Nightcrawler. But I'm gonna go with Timothy Chalamet because he's both available and he's great for the role and he looks like the, the part and he's young enough that it would allow a younger or a younger mystique. So that's what I would go with. Now, Colossus, this is cool. Dwayne Johnson, Fast and the Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. That's the official name of the new movie. And then Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. And then also Dominic Purcell from DC's Legends of Tomorrow and Prison Break. Dwayne Johnson is a giant. I think he's 6'5 or if not, he's 6'6". Six, six. The guy is huge, and he is a freaking stud. They don't call him The Rock for nothing. Uh, I think that he would be really interesting in the role. I don't know if he'd be great to play a Russian. That's the thing. So I've never heard him do anything but his own voice, really, except for one time in a movie with Kevin Hart where he played like a lispy kind of like fruit fruity kind of guy. But I don't think he... Uh, 
I don't think he can do accents very well. I haven't seen it personally. So I'm gonna go with Dominic Purcell, who I think is a little bit more of a rounded actor. Uh, and he does feel like Colossus. He's not nearly as big and shapely as Dwayne Johnson is. I don't think anybody is, but Dominic Purcell would play the role. And if he was gonna do motion capture, I think that's all you'd need. All right, Shadowcat, Anna Kendrick, from a simple favor in The Accountant, and then Haley Steinfeld from Bumblebee and Edge of 17. Between the two of these, I'm going with Haley Steinfeld. All right, Jubilee, we've got Brenda Song and Kelly Marie Tran. Between the two of these, because of age, I'm gonna go with Kelly Marie Tran. I think they're both good actresses, um, but I'm going Kelly Marie Tran because of age. And no, of course, it's not because I loved her in The Last Jedi. I did not. But um, I don't think that that should be why we assess an actor because she didn't have a choice in what that character was people hate the character people don't necessarily hate her you know what i mean or if they do you shouldn't if you hated the character you hate the character so that's that's my thing that's my take on that you can feel however you want all right mystique uh evan rachel wood from westworld and true blood and emma stone from the amazing spider-man 2 and la la land emma stone's a great actress but i'm going with evan rachel wood all right uh sorry all right, so Sabretooth, we have Jason Momoa from Game of Thrones and Aquaman. And we also have Charlie Hunnam from Pacific Rim and Sons of Anarchy. Between the two of these guys, Jason Momoa is, I believe, the bigger guy. And he looks a little bit more the role. I'm going to go with Jason Momoa, uh, even though he's not blonde. Um, I think that he would still do a better job playing that role. All right, so let's take a look at the lineups. Tom Hardy. Uh, Alexander Skarsgård, Emma Watson, Freema Agimon, Jared Leto, Dwayne Johnson, Anna Kendrick, Brenda Song, Evan Rachel Wood, and Jason Momoa. Team 2, Daniel Radcliffe, Ben Barnes, Cameron Bicandova, Kiki Palmer, Timothy Chalamet, Dominic Purcell, Haley Steinfeld, Kelly Rutran, Emma Stone, and Charlie Hunnam. Between the two of these, I'm going to go with Team 2. All right. Very good choices, by the way. These are really fun. All right. Now we're at Uzair Fancaster 18. Welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. Let's take a look. Wolverine, we have Tom Hardy and Tyler Hoechlin from Supergirl and Teen Wolf. Between the two of these, oh, this is a good, this is a really good matchup, my friend. Um, I'm gonna do Tom Hardy, but I think Tyler's great. All right, Gambit, we have Daniel Gillies from The Vampire Diaries and the Originals, and then Ian Somerhalder. This one to me is easy. I'm gonna go with Ian Somerhalder. All right, let's take a look. Rogue, we have Willa Holland from The Arrow and The O.C. and Daniel Campbell from The Originals and Tell Me a Story. I'm gonna go with Willa Holland. To me, that one is easy. All right, Storm, we have Mackenzie Small from Backstage and In the Dark and then Chandler Kinney from Lethal Weapon and Battlefield America. Clearly, you're going for some really young Storms. To me, Storm should be one of the oldest members of the team, but out of the two of these, I'm gonna go with Mackenzie Small. All right, uh, for Nightcrawler, we have Gavin Leatherwood from The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and Wicked Enigma. And then we have Timothy Chalamet from Beautiful Boy and Interstellar. Uh, I think that Gavin, to me, doesn't look very much like Nightcrawler and Timothy looks extremely like Nightcrawler. So I'm gonna go with Timothy. Plus he's a much more well-known actor. All right, so Colossus, we have Peyton Meyer from Girl Meets World and Gibby, and Ansel Elgort from The Fault in Our Stars and Baby Driver. I don't, th <laughs> I don't think that either of these guys particularly stand out to me as Colossus. Neither of them. Ansel Elgort is a, is a really great actor, but I don't think he's cut out for Colossus. I don't know Peyton Meyer. I haven't seen Girl Meets World. I haven't seen Gibby. I haven't seen any of his work. He doesn't, to me, look like a Colossus, though. For all I know, he could be five five feet tall. For all I know, he could be seven feet tall. I don't know. But I'm going to go with Ansel Elgort just on the premise of acting. And I think vocally, he might be able to do the voice of um, Colossus, perhaps. All right. Next up, we've got Shadowcat. We have Kaylee Bryant from Legacies and Mary Loss of Soul. And Caitlin Dever from Last Man Standing and Beautiful Boy. Between the two of these, I would go with Kaylee Bryant from Legacies and Mary Lost of Soul. 
All right. Uh, now for Jubilee, we have Lyrica Okano from Runaways, which is a Marvel property and it's technically in the MCU uh, and Pimp. And then also from Natasha Lou Bordizzo from Hotel Mumbai and Greatest Showman. Uh, both really talented actresses. I think both could play the role. I would personally choose Lyrica Okano, but she I think she is in the MCU, except it's again, it's a TV show in the MCU. It's unclear whether or not they're gonna allow that to cross over with the films at any point ever, or allow its storylines to travel upstream into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So for me, I gotta go with Natasha because she's not in the MCU. All right, now with Mystique, we've got Sofia Batella, The Mummy and Hotel Artemis, and uh, Leah Sedu from Spectre and Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. This is not a very flattering picture of her. I think this was probably her about to speak or something and she was about to glance over to the side. But um, she is, I think, typically better looking than that. But I would go Sofia Batella regardless. Um, I think she's just all around better suited for the role. All right. Next up, Sabretooth, we have Jai Courtney from Suicide Squad and Terminator Genesis, and Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy. Between the two of these guys, I think I would probably go with Jai Courtney. Um, he's he's currently with Suicide Squad, but um, nevertheless, if they could work that out, I would like to see him play the role. All right, now lastly, let's take a look at his teams. Tom Hardy, Daniel Gillies, Willa Holland, Mackenzie Small, Gavin Leatherwood, Peyton Meyer, Kaylee Bryant, Lyrica O'Connor, Sophia Botello, and Jay, Car Jay Courtney. For team two, we have Tyler Hoechlin, Ian Summerholder, Danielle Campbell, Chandler Kinney, Timothy Chalamet, Anzil Elgort, Caitlin Dever, Natasha Lou Bordizzo, uh, Leah Sedu, and, <clears throat> and Ryan Hurst. Sorry, guys. I think between the two of these teams, I am probably going to go with team one. Um, I really like Willa Holland for Rogue. I like uh, Mackenzie Small. I like uh, Kaylee Bryant, Lyric O'Connor. Uh, even though she's in the MCU technically, and Sophia Batella and Jay Cor Jai Courtney and Tom Holland. I think all these guys, uh, Tom Hardy, they're great. So let me know what you guys think down below, which of these rosters you like best. I like team one. All right, Fan Casting Central, welcome to the Fan Casting Summit. Let's take a look. Tom Hardy and Clive Stannon. I'm gonna try to make these ones a little quicker because we're, you know, getting kind of long here. Tom Hardy and Clive Stannon. I'm gonna go with Tom Hardy. He's better sized for the role of Wolverine. Um, Gaspard Uliel and Jay Ryan for Gambit. This is very difficult for me. Oh, I'm gonna go with Jay Ryan for this role. Next, we have Natalia Dyer and Amelia Clark for Rogue. Now, I love Natalia Dyer, but I'm gonna go with Amelia Clark for Rogue. All right, for Storm, we've got Yaya DaCosta and Deborah Ayerinde. Both of these ladies would knock it out of the park as Storm, but I'm gonna go Yaya DaCosta. All right, for Nightcrawler, we have Thomas Brody Sangster and Robert Sheehan. I'm gonna go with Robert Sheehan. For Colossus, Stanislav Yanovsky, or Yanovsky, uh, from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and Hostel Part Two. And then we also have Danila Kozlovsky from Viking and Vampire Academy. I'm gonna go with Danila for the role of Colossus. All right, for Shadowcat, we have Haley Lou Richardson from Five Feet Apart and Split, and Nina Dobrev from The Vampire Diaries and Let's Be Cops. I'm gonna go Haley Lou because of age, because of looks, and personality. All across the board, I'm gonna go with Haley Lou. All right, and then for Jubilee, we have Devin Nakoda from Backstage in the Swap, and then we have Chantal T uh, Tui, or Tui, I don't know how to say that, from Black Lightning and Battle for Skyarch. I think Chantal is a little too old to play this role. So I'm gonna go with Devin Nakoda to play Jubilee. And for Mystique, we have Elena Satin from The Gifted and 24 Legacy and Yvonne Strahovski. For this, I'm gonna go with Yvonne, but I think Elena would do really well as in the role. I like her in The Gifted, I think she would be great for the role, but I'm gonna go Yvonne. And then for Sabretooth, we have Travis Fimmel, Vikings, Warcraft. And then for actor number two, we have Travis, uh, we have uh, Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy. For this one, I'm going to have to go with Ryan Hurst. I'll tell you what, though. If at the beginning, instead of um, 
instead of Clive Stanton for Wolverine, you had put Travis, and at the end you put Tra you put Clive Stanton instead of Travis. Like if you swapped Travis and Clive from Sabretooth and Wolverine, just flip them, I would have probably taken those guys. But the opposite is true. I'm gonna go Ryan Hurst. All right. Um, but I see why you did it. Clive has dark hair and Travis has blonde hair. I understand that. Um, okay, so team one. Um, Tom Hardy, Gaspard Uliel, Natalia Dyer, Yaya DaCosta, Thomas Brody Sangster, Stanislav Yanovsky, Haley Richardson, Devon, uh, Devin Nikoda, Aline Satin, Satin, Alina Satine, sorry, I messed that up, and Travis Fimmel. Team two is Clive Stanton, Jay Ryan, Amelia Clark, De Deborah Ayurinde, Robert Sheehan, Danila Kozlovsky, Nina Dobrev, Dobrev, Chantal Tai, and Ivan Strahovski and Ryan Hurst. This one's tough because so many of them are favored on both sides. And there's so, such a balance of, I like this one over this one, but that one over this one. You know what I mean? So it's really stuck for me. This one's almost a tie. But I'm going to go with team two. I'm going to go team two on this one. All right. Very good. Next, we have Fantasy Fancast 23. Welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. We have first Ben Foster from Hell or High Water, X Men Last Stand, and then we also have Tom Hardy from Venom and Mad Max Fury Road. Between the two of these, I would take Tom Hardy, but it's a slim margin, and I would be happy to have Ben Foster as Wolverine. All right, Gambit. We have Gaspar Duliel from Hannibal Rising and St. Laurent, and Ian Somerhalder from The Vampire Diaries and Smallville. Again, both of these guys are great for the role. I'd probably take Gaspard, but either of them would be great in the role. All right, for this one, we have Lily James, Baby Driver and Cinderella, and we have Hayden Panettiere from Heroes and Nashville. Between the two of these for Rogue, I'm probably going Hayden Panettiere. But again, just like the other two, it's a win on both sides. All right, for Storm, we have Gugu Mbathura from Beyond the Lights and Ringling in Time, and then we have Yaya DaCosta from Chicago Men and Chicago Fire. For me, this one is clear. I'm going Yaya DaCosta, but Gugu is a great choice too. I like Yaya way better though. All right, Nightcrawler. We have Fionn Whitehead from Dunkirk and Black Mirror Bandersnatch, and Bill Skarsgård from It and Castle Rock. Again, dude, you're, you're like, you're batting a thousand here, dude. All these picks are really good. I like Bill Skarsgård, but Fionn Whitehead is a little bit younger, and I think he is going to work better visually. So I'm gonna go with Fionn Whitehead. All right, Colossus, Liam Hemsworth from The Hunger Games and Last Song, and then Alan Richardson from Titans and Smallville. I'm gonna go with Alan Richardson for this one, but again, Liam is great. Shadowcat, we have Haley Steinfeld, Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, and Bumblebee. And then actor number two is Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones and Doctor Who. I'm not a big fan of Maisie Williams. I'm gonna go Haley Steinfeld. For me, this one's clear, but I know a lot of people feel differently. A lot of people love Maisie Williams. And Peyton Elizabeth Lee for Jubilee or Piper Curta. Easy for me. I'm going Peyton Elizabeth Lee. All right, and we have Mystique, Charlize Theron, Mad Max, Fury Road, and Atomic Blonde, and Lauren Cohan from The Walking Dead and Supernatural. I'm gonna go with Charlize Theron for this one. I love Lauren Cohan, but I think for me, it's pretty clear. And especially if we're gonna pick someone between the age of uh, like, you know, I don't know, 25 to 35 for Nightcrawler, it's pretty important we have someone that seems or looks a little bit more mature. And I think that's Charlize Theron. All right, Sabretooth. We have Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy and Joel Egerton from Bright and Warrior. I had him on my list to play Beast, um, but this guy would be really good as Sabretooth. And especially you picked a really good image to show off how he could possibly look as Sabretooth. I'm gonna go Joel Egerton for this one. You swayed me, bro. All right, so first team, Ben Foster, Gaspard Uliel, Lily James, Gugu Mbatha-Raw, Fiona Whitehead, Liam Hemsworth, Haley Steinfeld, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Charlize Theron, and Ryan Hurst. Team two, Tom Hardy, Ian Somerhalder, Hayden Panettiere, Yaya DaCosta, Bill Skarsgård, Alan Richardson, Maisie Williams, Piper Curta, Lauren Cohan, and Joel Edgerton. I am going to go with team two for this one. 
team two for me is the winner. Um, a lot of great choices all across the board. I love it, but for me, team two works the best. All right, Nerdy Blurb TV. He is a gentleman who runs an Instagram account, but he mostly operates from his YouTube channel. Check him out on YouTube at Nerdy Blurb TV. Some of the best editing production value I've seen ever for a nerd channel on YouTube. He's the best. Love this guy. Go check him out. All right. Um, Wolverine, James Howlett. We have Richard Armitage from The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey and the Marvel podcast I mentioned earlier, Wolverine, The Long Night. Now, we also have Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad and Need for Speed, who's also a great choice. Given the choice between the two, I might take Richard Armitage, even though he's really tall. I would probably still take Armitage. Great choice though. Um, so now Gambit, we have Jared Padalecki from Friday the 13th and Supernatural, which I love. And Josh Holloway from Colony and Lost. This guy totally is Gambit. I was saying this to my wife the whole time we were watching Lost. I was like, babe, this guy should play Gambit. Why is this guy playing Gambit? And uh, actually, you know what? He would make a sick saber tooth too. But um, either one would be great. But this guy is, is sick. Just because we're seeing him again, I might possibly, I mean, he's like a close, it's almost a tie for me. Age-wise, I might choose Jared, but Josh Holloway's awesome. And if you're gonna have an older, younger, like if all the young younger people in the X-Men are gonna be a little bit older, like in their 20s, Josh Holloway might be a great choice for Gambit, because then you could have an older Storm, an older Gambit, mid-older Rogue. Um, older beast, you know, you could have some more experienced members of the X-Men in there as well. And Josh Hawley would be a great choice. Next, we have Rogue, Alexander Daddario from When We First Met in Baywatch and Hayden Panettiere from Nashville and Heroes. I love both of these gals, but for me, Alexander Daddario takes the win by a mile. I think she's perfect for the role. All right, next we have Storm, Teona Paris from If Beale Street Could Talk and Jade Achete if I'm saying that correctly, uh, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency and Bruce, um, or rather Bruce, I think that's how you say it. Um, <laughs> so Teona Paris for me takes the win. I think she looks more like Storm and I would love to see her play her. She's one of my picks. I would love to see Teona Paris play the role. All right, next up for Nightcrawler, we have Alex Wolf from Hereditary and Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle and Dev Patel from Slumdog, Slumdog Millionaire. This is really cool because we're seeing two guys who are not German uh, cast or not looking like they could be German play a character who's supposed to be German. This would be really cool. But given the choice between the two, I think Dev Patel's the better actor, more experienced, and you shave off his facial hair and I think he would look a lot like Nightcrawler. Much more, I think, even than Alex Wolf. So if you want a younger person, I'd go Alex, but I think Dev Patel is probably the safer, better option. So I'm going Dev. Yes, Florian Montianu from Creed 2 and Bogot versus Alan Richson from Smallville and Titans. Dude, you're pitting some of my favorite actors here. I love Alan Richson and Florian Montianu left a huge impression in Creed 2. This guy is a savage, he's a beast, um, and he would play Colossus really well. I will say, given more acting experience though, Alan Richson is probably the better bet, but how can you top? Look at that guy. He's Colossus. Just paint him silver. You chrome him out. <laughs> this guy's great. Either one's a win, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Florian. Actually, I'm gonna go Florian. And for Shadow Cat, we have Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things and Velvet Buzzsaw, and Anna Kendrick from A Simple Favor and The Accountant. Natalia Dyer takes the win for me. I think she's great, and I think she's young enough to play the role, in my opinion. All right. Next up, we have Jubilee. Aquafina from Ocean's 8 and Crazy Rich Asians, and then Brenda Song from Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior and The Social Network. Aquafina is not particularly young. So I think that it's close enough that you could justify the difference between Aquafina and Brenda Song as a non-issue. Brenda Song is older, but she looks about the same age. Um, I would go with Brenda Song personally. And I think that that would be the better choice personally. But let me know if you guys think I'm wrong down below. All right. Next, we have Mystique, Jenna Malone from The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2 and Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. And then we also have Summer Glow from Arrow and the 4400. Summer Glow is really cool. 
uh, very interesting to look at because she's like she doesn't particularly look Asian literally just in the shape of her eyes but not like you know it's it's very wide-eyed which is very unique um, very interesting to look at but Jenna Malone I think is a better actress and I think Jenna Malone would look more like a classic mystique so I'm gonna go with Jenna Malone well actually Jenna Malone in this picture looks <laughs> more like and tr normally in most things I've seen her she doesn't even look like this this is a rare photo where she looks like that but in this photo I'm gonna go with Jenna Malone um, all right, and so Sam Worthington for Sabretooth, which is a cool, cool choice. Avatar and Hacksaw Ridge, and then Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy. Sam Worthington's cool, but I like Ryan Hurst, so I'm gonna go with Ryan Hurst. <laughs> all right, so now let's compare the two teams. First, we have Richard Armitage, uh, Jared Padalecki, Alexander Daddario, Tiana Paris, Alex Wolf, Florian Montianu, Natalia Dyer, Aquafina, Jenna Malone, Sam Worthington. Then team two, we have Aaron Paul, Josh Holloway, Hayden Panettiere, Jade Achete, Dev Patel, Alan Richson, Anna Kendrick, Brenda Song, Summer Glow, and Ryan Hurst. These are both great, but I'm going with team one. I can't pass up Armitage, Padalecki, Daddario, Paris, Montianu, Dyer, and Malone. That's a rock star team. I'm going team one for sure. Let me know what you guys think down below, which one's your favorite. All right, Fan Casting Incorporated, welcome to the Fan Casting Summit. Let's take a look. All right, we have Keanu Reeves versus Tom Hardy. Given the choice between these two, it's a tough one, but I'm gonna go with Tom Hardy. Uh, I think he's uh, just an all-star pick for the role. Uh, and then also we have for Gambit, Pedro Pascal, The Mandalorian which is an upcoming TV show for the Disney Plus streaming service coming 2019 at towards the end of 2019 and Channing Tatum G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra and he's currently set to play Gambit between the two of these guys I think Pedro Pascal is a great actor but I am certainly going Gambit uh, or rather Channing Tatum who is set to play Gambit because um, he grew up in Louisiana and uh, he's got family in Louisiana uh, and uh, he's he's no stranger to like the Mardi Gras scene um, he's loved the character since he was a child. He's perfect for the role. He's literally perfect for the role. Same build, uh, a good face for the role. Um, I think he'd just be great. I love it. All right, next we have Rogue and Hathaway versus Willa Holland. I would definitely go Willa Holland here. Love Anne Hathaway, but I'm going Willa. All right, for Storm, Sonequa Martin-Green and Lupita Nyong'o. I'm going to go Sonequa Martin-Green here. And Lupita Nyong'o is in Black Panther. She's already in the MCU in a role that has lines and a lot of FaceTime. So I don't think that'll work. But either way, I would have gone with Sonequa Martin-Green. <coughs> Pardon me, guys. All right. For Nightcrawler, we have Rami Malek from Mr. Robot and Bohemian Rhapsody and Joseph Gordon-Levitt from Inception and The Dark Knight Rises. I think this is a really good role for both of these guys. But I'm going to go with Rami Malek. I think he's got sharper features, and I think that's important for whoever's going to play Nightcrawler. All right. Next, we have Colossus. Stefan Kopicic from Deadpool and Deadpool 2. Um, he was the voice actor who played Colossus. And then we also have Scott Adkins uh, from Boyka, Undisputed, and Doctor Strange. Uh, everyone's personal favorite. Uh, well, not everyone, but a lot of people's favorite to play Batman in the DCEU. Uh, or at all, ever. Um... I think that this is rare, but I understand it because you see him in Boyka and he plays a Russian. He would be really good for the role, but I'm going to go with Stefan Kapichik. It would be really sweet to just bring the Colossus that's already in Deadpool into the MCU. That would be pretty cool because I'm pretty sure they're going to do with that, that with Deadpool. He might not actually join in any of the MCU films, but you might see MCU characters join in the Deadpool universe like as a cameo. So that would be pretty cool. Uh, oh, and by the way. He was already, uh, Scott Adkins was in Doctor Strange. He is in the MCU technically, but he was one of the minions of um, uh, Kaecilius. And he, it was, you know, he had some fight scenes, he had FaceTime, but I think he would probably be forgotten enough that you could put him in a different role and people wouldn't really care. Especially a CGI role like Colossus. All right, Shadowcat. We have Sayoris Ronan from Lady Bird and Hannah. And we also have Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones and X-Men Dark Phoenix, both to play Shadowcat. I love that you chose Sophie Turner for this. My wife looks a great deal like Sophie Turner. I think that Sophie Turner would be great in the role of Shadowcat, and I would like to see her play the role um, more than I would like to see Sayoris Ronan. I like her, but I think that Sophie Turner is probably better off in the role. 
All right. Jubilee, we have Jamie Chung from The Gifted in Gotham, and we also have Ryla Fukushima from The Wolverine and Ghost in the Shell. If I had to choose, I would go Jamie Chung. Take her from The Gifted and plop her right into um, the new X-Men as Jubilee. I really love her as Blink. I hope that they don't. I hope they keep her um, somehow. I don't think they will, but I hope that they do because she's talented and she's great. I think she looks more like the role than Ryla Fukushima. Ryla Fukushima has a very unique head shape and it's very like, it's very heart shaped. Um, and it's, it's very iconic to her. It doesn't feel or look like Jubilee. I don't think that she would be better in that role than Jamie Chung, so I'm taking Jamie. All right, next up, Mystique. We have Charlize Theron from Atomic Blonde and Mad Max Fury Road, and Uma Thurman from Kill Bill and Batman and Robin. So we've got Poison Ivy back uh, versus Charlize Theron. I would personally still take Charlize Theron, but I appreciate greatly that you brought Uma Thurman back into the fold. That's pretty cool. I do hope that they find a role for her. Uh, maybe in the Eternals, that'd be cool. Um, all right, so now for Sabretooth, Brad Pitt, Inglorious Bastards, and um, Fury. And then we have Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy, both these gentlemen fighting to the death to play Sabretooth. I think that it would be really cool to see Brad Pitt play something other than his quick little cameo in Deadpool 2, but I'm gonna go Ryan Hurst. I think Ryan Hurst is just better for the role. And let's take a look at the teams. So we have Keanu Reeves, Pedro Pascal, Anne Hathaway, Sonequa Martin-Green, Rami Malek, Stefan Kapichik, Sayoris Ronan, Jamie Chung, Charlize Theron, and Brad Pitt. Second, we have Tom Hardy, Channing Tatum, Willa Holland, Lupita Nyong'o, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Scott Adkins, Sophie Turner, Ryla Fukushima, Uma Thurman, and Ryan Hurst. This one's tough because I like team two better, but you have two people there that are currently in the MCU and a couple people that I just didn't really see. Uh, one person, uh, Ryla Fukushima, I didn't really see in the role. And um, I'm still, I think I'm still gonna go team two though. I'm gonna go team two because I genuinely love Tom Hardy, Channing Tatum, Willow Holland, Joseph Gordon, that would be great. Um, uh, I'd love to see Scott Adkins in something a little more prominent. Um, I would love to see Sophie Turner in Shadowcat and uh, Ryan Hurst as Sabretooth. So that's the win for me. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. All right, next up, James the Butte Castiglione. Welcome to, back to the Fan Casting Summit. All right, uh, we have Tom Hardy versus Christian Kane from Leverage and The Librarians. I don't know Christian Kane very well, but he does look a great deal like the part. So that's pretty cool. I like that you found someone like that. This is very outside the box thinking. I'm gonna have to go with Tom Hardy because again, I, I don't know this other guy, Christian Kane, unfortunately. But um, I will say good job finding someone that looks the role. And if you guys know who Christian Kane is and you say, hey man, that's awesome. You better tell me down below because I need to know if I need to check this guy out, all right? So you guys let me know. Next, we have Gambit. We have Scott Eastwood from Suicide Squad and Pacific Rim and Channing Tatum, G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra, Gambit 2020. I think that Channing Tatum has this all day, but Scott Eastwood would be a really solid choice for this one. We see a lot of Scott getting cast as Wolverine and even Cyclops. We don't get him cast to play Gambit a lot. So I think that's a good, good choice, but Channing Tatum I think has the win for me. Next, Rogue. We have Debbie Ryan from Insatiable and Jesse and Daniel Panabaker from The Flash, CW, and Sky High. Between the two of these, I'm probably going to go with Danielle Panabaker. I really like her, and I think that she was great on The Flash, but I would love to see her um, in a little bit more of a maybe flirtatious, kind of like a frustrated Southern role, you know, like Southern gal kind of role. That'd be really fun. I like this actress. All right. Storm, we have Anna Diop from Titans and Us and Tika Sumter from Ride Along in Salt. Given the choice between the two of these, I would go Anna Diop. I think she looks more like Storm. And I think that um, even though she's young, like I would take Tika Sumter because of the age. Um, but I would probably take Anna because of the looks. Um, I think she looks a lot more like Storm. So that's what I would choose. All right, next up, Nightcrawler. We have Cillian Murphy from The Dark Knight and Inception. And we have Asa Butterfield from Ender's Game and The Space Between Us. I would go Asa Butterfield because again, we need a younger um, actor to play Nightcrawler to contrast with Mystique, right? Being older. Cillian Murphy's a great actor. 
I think he probably would do a good job as Nightcrawler, but I'm gonna go Ace of Butterfield. All right, for Colossus, we have Alexander Nevsky from Moscow Heat and Minimum Impact, and then one of the biggest actors in Hollywood of all time. We have Half Thor Julius Bjornsson. That's Half Thor. Like you say it with like a TH, Half Thor. Like Thor, because he's a freaking god. <laughs> <laughs> he's from Game of Thrones. He plays the mountain and kickboxer retaliation. The guy is insane. I would choose half Thor Bjornsson. If we can get more of him in anything, I would take that. He's freaking legendary. That guy is a savage. Actually, he should, honestly, he should be playing the juggernaut. That's who he should be playing. But for this purpose, I'm going to say yes, half Thor Bjornsson. All right, next, Shadowcat Odea Rush from The Giver and Ladybird, and Emmy Rossum from Shameless and Mystic River. I would take Odea Rush over Emmy. For Jubilee, Peyton Elizabeth Lee and Andy Mack, uh, Peyton Elizabeth Lee from Andy Mack and Scandal, or Chelsea T. Zhang from The Perks of Being a Wallflower and Titans Season 2. She was announced she's going to be playing the daughter of Slade. All right, wait, what was it? I don't remember if it was the daughter of Slade Wilson or if she was supposed to be playing Terra. But I thought, I thought the girl that was playing Tara was a different chick. So I think this is probably supposed to be um, <clears throat> Jade Wilson, probably. So either way, she's cast to be in Titans. So I'll make, probably make a video about that. Never, nevertheless, uh, be looking for that. And uh, I would take Peyton Elizabeth Lee over Chelsea T. Zhang any day. All right. So for this one, Mystique, we've got Megan Fox from New Girl and Transformers and Jessica Laundes from 90210 and The Prince. Now, I will take Megan Fox over Jessica Laundes. Megan Fox is really small, but she has the look. She doesn't look small on camera. On camera, she looks actually like she'd probably be 5'11 or something, but she's not. She's like 5'4 or something like that, 5'2, really short. Um, but she does have that look. And both of these ladies do, but I'm gonna go with Megan Fox. I like that you put her on there. Good on you, man. All right, Sabretooth, Ryan Hurst, The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy, and James Preston Rogers from Outlander and Alpha Wolf. These are basically my picks. <laughs> I love these picks. James Preston Rogers has it for me. And finally, let's take a look at your choices. So we have Tom Hardy, Scott Eastwood, Debbie Ryan, Anna Diop, Cillian Murphy, Alexander Nevsky, Odea Rush, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Megan Fox and Ryan Hurst, a really solid, solid lineup. Um, and then team two, we have Christian Kane, Channing Tatum, Daniel Pennebaker, Tika Sumter, Asa Butterfield, Half Thor Bjornsson, Emmy Rossum, Chelsea T. Zhang, Jessica Laundes, and James Preston Rogers. Wow, these are really good lineups. Um, I'm gonna go with team one. I think team one to me is a well-rounded team. On team, one, on team two, there was a couple options where I was like, oh, I don't know, maybe. So I'm gonna go on team one. All right, Daft Detective, welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. We have Emil Hirsch for Wolverine. If you guys remember him, he was the young man that played Speed Racer, and he's also in Lone Survivor. He's now no longer a young man, but he is nevertheless a talented actor. So Wolverine, Emil Hirsch, or Milo Ventimiglia. I would personally take between the two of these guys... I don't know, dude. This is actually really close. From, Milo's from This Is Us and Heroes, a really talented actor, well-known. Not a lot of people are aware of Emil Hirsch, but Emil Hirsch looks like a Wolverine. <sighs> I'm gonna go Milo, just to be safe. I'm gonna go Milo, because I haven't seen Emil Hirsch in a lot recently. I've seen him in Speed Racer, but I haven't seen him recently, so I would probably go with Milo. But both are great choices, guys. Um, all right, Gambit Uliel from Hannibal Rising and St. Lawrence and Tyler Blackburn from Pretty Little Liars and Ravenswood. I haven't seen Tyler Blackburn's work. Visually, I think he's close, but Gaspard is literally perfect. So I'm going to go out of ignorance. I'm going to choose Gaspard because I, ha I know a lot about Gaspard and he's literally perfect. So uh, Tyler, sorry, my man, I don't know you, but you guys should let me know down in the comments if he's great for this role. Uh, all right, sweet. Rogue, we have Natalie Dyer, or Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things and Velvet Buzzsaw, and Cameron Bikendova from Gotham and, um, and Battlefield America. Given the choice between the two of these ladies, I would go with Natalia Dyer. I would still expect her to put in contacts and make her eyes go green, um, which is something that Cameron Bikendova does have, big green eyes. But I'm going to go with Natalia Dyer. I think that's just the 
in my opinion, I think she's the better actress. And uh, for Storm, Aisha Issa from Brick Mansions and Warm Bodies. And then we have Gugu Mbatha-Ra from Belle and Miss Sloan. I would take Aisha Issa from Brick Mansions over Gugu uh, because she looks much more to me like Storm. All right. Nightcrawler. We have Art Parkinson from Kubo and the Two Strings and Game of Thrones. And then we also have Robbie Kay from Once Upon a Time and Heroes Reborn. I think given the choice between these, I would probably take Robbie K. Yeah, I think I'd take Robbie K. Both are really good options, but I, I think the aesthetic to me pops out a little bit more with Robbie K. And with Colossus, we have Army Hammer, mine, and uh, The Social Network. Mine is a great movie, by the way. Um, if you haven't seen that, check it out on Netflix. And then Danila Kozlovsky, Flight Crew, and Viking. Both of these guys would be awesome in the role. I want Army Hammer to play Cyclops personally, but Danila, I would take Danila for, for uh, Colossus for sure. Great choices, by the way. Now, Shadowcat, we have Ariel Will uh, Winter from Batman The Dark Knight Returns, which is an animated movie in which uh, I believe she plays um, the female Robin, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, and then uh, Odea Rush from The Giver and Lady Bird. I would take... Odea Rush, but it would be really cool to get Ariel Winter on the big screen in a way that we, the nerds, the fans, can recognize her. Because um, I think a lot of the time people overlook the voice actors because um, you don't see their faces. But yeah, she's in the Dark Knight Returns Batman animated movie. All right, and then uh, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Andy Mack, and Scandal versus Timothy Espenson from Spider Man Homecoming and Kirby Buckets. This one's really close, but. Tiffany is in the MCU. So I'm going to have to go with Peyton Elizabeth Lee, who I do think is great for the role. All right. And then this is really cool. For Mystique, we have Lena Headey from Game of Thrones and 300 and Ava Green from Dumbo and 300 Rise of an Empire, which is 300 part two. So I like both of these. I think I would go with Lena Headey from Game of Thrones to play Mystique. This is really cool. Good good on you, man. These are some great choices. This is why I love the Fan Casting Summit. You get so many various options, people with different opinions, different appreciations, different fandoms. They've seen different things come together and put their minds together to create all this awesomeness. So that's why I love this. Now for Sabretooth, we have Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy and Travis Fimmel from Vikings and Warcraft. I will say... My instinct says Travis Fimmel. I'm gonna go with Travis, he's a savage. Ryan Hurst is also a savage, he's one of my top two picks. But I'm gonna give this one to Travis. I think he deserves some love, and I love this. I love him as Sabretooth, I'm gonna be great. All right, let's take a look. Emil Hirsch, Gaspard Uliel, Natalia Dyer, Aisha Issa, Art Parkinson, Army Hammer, Ariel Winter, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Lena Headey, and Ryan Hurst. This team two is Milo Ventimiglia, Tyler Blackburn, Cameron Bikendova, Gugu Mbatha-Ra, Robbie K, Danila Kozlovsky, Odea Rush, Timothy Espenson, Ava Green, and Travis Fimmel. For me, team one is the winner because even the people that I did not choose, I think are still great for these roles. And I love these. Good job. Daft Detective, this is awesome. I love team one. Let me know what you guys like down below in the comments. So let's keep going. Fan casting is dope. Welcome back to the Fan Casting Summit. Here we go. Scott Eastwood for Wolverine versus Tom Hardy. I would choose Tom Hardy, but Scott is a great, great option. And I think he's one of the most chosen, among the most chosen to so far to play the role. You're not alone in thinking that. Scott would be great, but I'm gonna choose Tom. All right, next we have Matt Bomer and Jared Padalecki. This one's really tough, but I'm gonna go Jared. I love Matt Bomer. But he's currently with DC, and I think it's less likely. Both of them are almost equal in my head as to which one should be Gambit. But I'm going to go with Jared. And for this one, again, another two who would be awesome in the role. Alexander Daddario and Lauren Cohan. But I'm going to go with, Laura, with uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go with Alexander Daddario because I think she's actually perfect for the role. Um, height, size, body, face, eyes, everything. I think she's just perfect for the role. All right, and uh, for Storm, 
Anna Diop, Titans, and Us, and then Janelle Monet, Hidden Figure, and Bot and uh, Moonlight. Um, for I would probably between the two of these, I'd go Anna Diop from Titans, even though I think she's a little younger than Janelle. I could be wrong about that, but I think Anna Diop would probably be better. All right. And now for Ezra, for Nightcrawler, we have Ezra Miller from Justice League and the Perks of Being a Wallflower and Timothy Chalamet, Beautiful Boy and Interstellar. Again, this is like a young and an old option. It's like both are perfect for the role. I might go with Ezra Miller, but depending on how old our Mystique is, I'll, I'll probably end up changing my mind about who should play Nightcrawler because both these guys deserve the role, honestly. Now, Ezra's with Justice League. So I'm gonna probably go Timothy Chalamet just to be safe, but let's go with him. All right, Colossus, we have Liam Hemsworth and Alan Richson. I'm gonna go with Alan Richson for this one. And for Shadowcat, again, Haley Steinfeld versus Anna Kendrick, I'm going Haley Steinfeld. For uh, Jubilee, we have Peyton Elizabeth Lee and Brenda Song. I love Brenda Song, she's one of my top two picks, but I think if we're going with Nightcrawler and Shadowcat being like 20, ish 25 ish then jubilee needs to be younger than that so i'm gonna go peyton elizabeth lee and for mystique we have alicia vikander who is in my opinion probably younger than i would want her to be to be the mother of someone who's like 25 so i'm gonna go with charlie's throne for this one charlie's throne is the pick here for me and for Sabretooth, we this is tight we've got jason momoa and jai courtney i love both these guys I think both would be great in the role, but they're both tied up with, oh, that's that's interesting. They're both in DC films, uh, Aquaman and Suicide Squad. So it's kind of a level playing field. I would, huh, I'd probably go with Jai Courtney. Yeah, I think I'm going with Jai Courtney. And let's take a look at the rosters. We have for team one, that's not accurate. It shouldn't say Ben Foster. It should say, Scott Eastwood. So it should say Scott Eastwood, Gaspar Duliel, Alexander Daddario, Anna Diop, Ezra Miller, Liam Hemsworth, Haley Steinfeld, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Charlize Theron, and Jason Momoa. For team two, it should read Tom Hardy, uh, Ian, uh, that should not say Ian Somerhalder. That should say Jared Padalecki, Lauren Cohan, Janelle Monae, Timothy Chalamet, Alan Ritten, Anna Kendrick, Brenda Song, Alicia Vikander, and Jai Courtney. Between the two of these, Ah, uh, I'm going team one. Ah, throw a wrench in the plan. I'm going team one for this one. I love both these teams. They're both awesome, both great, and I think they both knocked it out of the park. All right, Dr. Fancast, welcome to the Fancasting Summit. All right, let's take a look. We have, um, let's see, Wolverine, Logan Marshall Green, and Taron Egerton from Kingsman and Billionaire Boys Club. I would go probably... You know what? This might surprise you guys. I might go Taron Egerton for this one. Even though Logan Marshall Green is like, and I hate to say this, he's kind of like Walmart version of um, Tom Hardy. <laughs> they basically look like twins, but he's lesser known. And uh, I think he's like the cheaper discount version of Tom Hardy. Um, he is already in the MCU. Taron Egerton is not. I'm going to go Taron Egerton. Um and I don't say that to depreciate Logan Marshall Green. He's a great actor, but I'm gonna go with Taron Egerton. Um, Gambit, Garrett Hedlund from Triple Frontier and Tron Legacy, and then also Matt Bomer from Doom Patrol and White Collar. I'm gonna go with Matt Bomer. Both are great. Uh, Rogue, Lily James versus Blake Lively. I'm gonna, let me see. I have already cast Blake Lively as like three things. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pick her. I'm gonna go with Lily James, but she would crush. She would do really well in that role. All right, Storm, Anna Diop from Titans and Us, and Zoe Kravitz from X Men First Class and Mad Max Fury Road. For Storm, I'm definitely going Anna Diop. And for Nightcrawler, we have Timothy Chalamet from Beautiful Boy and Interstellar, and Ezra Miller from Justice League and the Perks of Being a Wallflower. Again, this goes back to age. I think both these guys are perfect. They're both ideal. But what age do we want Nightcrawler to be? And in relation to his mother, um, how does that work out? So this one's kind of in the air. Both are winners to me. It's kind of a tie. If I had to choose, I might go Ezra Miller. But I don't know if I want that old of a mystique. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go 
I'm gonna ride the fence. Both are winners. Let me get away with that. Channing Tatum, GI Joe, the Rise of Cobra uh, for Colossus. That's cool. He's for Colossus. That's actually a good idea. Him as Colossus is not bad. Um, and then Liam Hemsworth, uh, The Hunger Games in the last song. I will go, even though I would rather see Channing play Gambit, he would play a good Colossus. I'm going to go with Channing as Colossus. And Olivia Cook from Ready Player One and Bates Motel as Shadowcat or Sayoris Ronan from Lady Bird and Hannah. I'm going to go with Olivia Cook. And Peyton Elizabeth Lee for Jubilee or Lana Condor from X-Men Apocalypse where she did play Jubilee and uh, Alita Battle Angel. So basically ret ret retcon, sorry I said that wrong, retcon X-Men Apocalypse Jubilee or get Peyton Elizabeth Lee. They're not going to retcon her. So I'm going to go Peyton Elizabeth Lee. And I think that it would have been a great option. I would have liked to see more with her um, as Jubilee. But we didn't. So uh, Peyton Elizabeth Lee. Next, we have Mystique, Charlize Theron, and Elizabeth Banks. So now you've got... You've, you've figured me out, dude. I love Elizabeth Banks. Elizabeth Banks is my top pick. I mean, like, she's not my top pick for this role. She's on my list. But uh, Charlize Theron is in my top three. But I have to go. I have to go Elizabeth Banks. I have to go Elizabeth Banks. If she can get the role, she would crush that role. Especially as the leader of the Brotherhood. While, you know, Magneto's off setting up either Asteroid M or running Genosha or something. I think it would be awesome to have uh, Elizabeth Banks as Raven Darkhold Mystique. All right, so we have Sabretooth, Travis Fimmel, and Alexander Skarsgård. I'm going Alexander Skarsgård because of his monstrous size. All right, now let's take a look at the teams. Logan Marshall Green, Garrett Hedlund, Lily James, Anna Diop, Timothy Chalamet, Channing Tatum, Olivia, uh, Olivia Cook, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Charlie's Throne, and Travis Fimmel. Across the board, that's a winning team. Now on the bottom, Taron Egerton, Matt Bomer, Blake Lively, Zoe Kravitz, Ezra Miller, Liam Hemsworth, Sarah Ronan, Lana Condor, Elizabeth Banks, and Alexander Skarsgård. Again, across the board, I think that's also a winning team. But I'm not thrilled about Zoe Kravitz, and I'm not thrilled about... I mean, I, I like Sarah Ronan, but I'm not crazy about her in the role of Shadowcat. So I'm going to go with Team 1. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. All right. Devil of Fancasts. Welcome to the Fancasting Summit again, my friend. Tom Hardy or John Bernthal? That is the question. Now, if the pun the Punisher's already canceled, the Punisher's done. Technically, he's no longer in the MCU. Technically. I mean, if you want to continue him in like two years once the contract allows him to be used again, then awesome. I think Marvel won't waste those characters. I hope they bring him back. But if they're not going to bring the Punisher back, you could retcon him to be Wolverine. I would love to see that. John Bernthal is my pick. Um, all right, so Gambit, we have Sam Claflin. Good choice. And Gaspard Uliel. As much as I like Sam Claflin, and I think he would be good in the role, Gaspard Uliel is my pick. Next, we have Catherine Langford, who is in Avengers Endgame. So I wanted to mention this. She has an unnamed credit in Avengers Endgame, and I have a theory about this, which I'll have to make a video for so you guys can hear that. But I better hurry up, otherwise I won't get to make it because uh, Endgame is like released tonight. <laughs> Actually, tonight as of the making of this video, you guys are gonna be watching this like a week or something like that. So nevertheless, uh, she's in there. We're gonna find out really soon what that is. No spoilers if you guys see in the movie. Don't share any spoilers about that here in the, in the credits or, or in the comments at all. Please just keep that to yourselves for a little bit and we'll talk about that in a different video. Lauren Cohan, Supernatural and The Walking Dead. Between the two of these, I think either would be wonderful, but I'm probably gonna go Lauren Cohan because I want her to be a little bit older. All right, Storm, we have Naomi Harris from Rampage and Moonlight and Deborah Iorinde from Barbershop, The Next Cut and Girls Trip. Um, between the two of these, I'm probably gonna go Deborah Iorinde. And with Nightcrawler, now this is interesting. Liam Hemsworth as Nightcrawler is very interesting because I see what you're doing here. He looks like an old Nightcrawler. If you're looking at old Nightcrawler, then he does look a great deal like that. But if we're gonna go with, depending on the age of our mystique, I might have to revert and go Liam Aiken because I'm probably gonna go with Liam Aiken because of his size, his frame, that kind of thing. A little bit more Nightcrawler-esque, but uh, Liam Hemsworth is a cool choice if you're gonna go with an older night, Nightcrawler. So either one's a win. All right. 
Colossus, Miles Teller, Divergent and War Dogs, and Joe Manganiello, What to Expect When Expecting, which is hilarious, and Rampage. I do not see Miles Teller as Colossus. I mean, I kind of see like, because he has that smoother face a little bit, you know? Like it's like, it's up and, it's like up and down, a little bit of a square or jaw. Um, and he's got the point. Okay, so maybe I do see it. I do see that a little bit, but he's not that big. Joe Manganiello is freaking huge. I would probably have to go with Joe. Unless you're gonna like motion capture CGI, Miles Teller. Um, he's a great actor. And I don't want him to go to waste just being in the fan four stick, but nevertheless, Joe Mayno is my pick. All right, next we have Shadowcat, Natalia Dyer, and Michelle Trachtenberg, who is really cool. I have not seen anyone cast her yet for this role. That's a great choice, but I'm still going Natalie Dyer, or Natalia Dyer. All right, next for Jubilation Lee, we have Ellen Wong and Paola Andino. Wow, okay, so this is the first, I think, non Asian, or at least non full Asian that is being cast for Jubilee, which is not necessarily bad. She does look like she could play that role, but I'm gonna still go Ellen Wong. Uh, good thinking though, that's fun. All right, Charlie's Throne for Mystique versus Kate Beckinsale, Underworld and Van Helsing. Kate Beckinsale would be sick, dude. Oh my gosh, that'd be awesome. But I'm gonna go Charlie's Throne. I think that she does look a little bit more close to the role visually. And that's important to me. So I would I would totally believe and be sold by Charlie's Throne. And with Sabretooth, we have Sam Worthington and Ryan Hurst between the two. I am going to go with Ryan Hurst. And let's take a look at the teams. So first, Tom Hardy, Sam Claflin, Catherine Langford, Naomi Harris, Liam Hemsworth, Miles Teller, Natalia Dyer, Ellen Wong, Charlie's Throne, and Sam Worthington. For team two, we have John Brenthal, Gaspar Deleo, Lauren Cohen, Deborah Irinde, Liam Aiken, Joe Manganiello, Michelle Trachtenberg, Paolo Andino, Kate Beckinsale, and Ryan Hurst. I, this might surprise you guys, I'm going with team two. Team two looks awesome to me. I would love to see team two come to life in the MCU. That would be fantastic. All right, next up. Connor's FanCast, welcome back to the FanCasting Summit. Let's take a look at your choices. First, we have Robert Pattinson and Carl Urban. Uh, Carl Urban from Star Trek and Thor Ragnarok. He's a big nerd, he's also in Lord of the Rings. Um, he's in a bunch of nerd stuff, Dread, I think it was. Both these guys would knock it out of the park. I think they're approximately the same height too. Um, I might go Carl Urban, just cause he's a little bit older. And I think that's what you would probably want and need from Wolverine, but either one would work. Um, Gambit, we've got Cole, oh, I'm sorry, Joe Cole from A Prayer Before Dawn and Black and Back Mirror. Back Mirror or Black Mirror? I don't remember what it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be Black Mirror. And Colin Farrell from Dumbo and Daredevil. I love Colin Farrell. I'm gonna go Colin Farrell for this one. All right, uh, Anna Rogue, we have Florence Pew, Poo, Pug, Puch, Pooch, something like that. I don't know how to say her last name. Lady Macbeth and Fighting With My Family, and Riley Q, Kyo, also don't know how to say her last name. We'll just say Florence and Riley. So uh, for Riley, we have American Honey and Mad Max Fury Road. And then for uh, Florence, we have Lady Macbeth. I think I'm gonna go with Florence for this one, but Riley's also a good choice. I just personally see Florence more visually. All right. For Storm, we have Aja, Naomi King, and Naomi Harris. I am gonna go with Naomi Harris for this one. I think uh, she also, both of them look like Storm to me, but I think Naomi Harris, I've seen more with her. So I'm gonna go with Naomi Harris. All right, next we have Levi Miller from Pan and a Wrinkle in Time. And we also have Jorge Lendeberg, Lendeborg Jr. from Bumblebee and Sp Spider-Man Far From Home. This is interesting. I would not have seen or cast Jorge Lendeberg uh, Jr. personally, because I don't see it, but he was really enjoyable in Bumblebee. I did like him a lot there. He is also cast in Spider-Man Far From Home, which makes him in the MCU, which also makes this choice easy. I'm going with Levi Miller. All right, Colossus. Joel Egerton, Bright and Warrior, and then Dolph Lundgren uh, from Rocky IV and Aquaman. I am, I love this. I love that you did that. Rocky IV was one of the best movies of all time. Uh, Dolph Lundgren is great. I love him in basically everything he does. And uh, he is in DC's Aquaman right now. 
but he of course would make a great Colossus. I would personally like to motion capture him and just make it CGI, but just have him play that role. I think it'd be really cool. Um, so then uh, Maya Mitchell for Shadow Cat from the Fosters in Good Trouble and then Rooney Mara from the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and Una. Una. I will go with Maya Mitchell because I think she's better for the role. I don't know that Rooney Mara is good for this role personally but it's up to you guys you guys let me know if i'm crazy all right and next jubilee we have peyton elizabeth lee from andy mac and shameless and lyrica okana from runaways and pimp i like both these actresses i think both of them are great for the role lyrica is in runaways he's in marvel's runaways currently so i think i'm gonna definitely be going with peyton but i probably would have gone with peyton either way because i want a young jubilee all right next we have mystique Charlize Theron, Mad Max Fury Road, and Atomic Blonde. And then we have Sasha Lane from Hellboy 2019 and American Honey. I'm going to choose Charlize Theron. Um, even though our pick for Nightcrawler was quite young, we probably could almost get away with a Sasha Lane. Um, almost. But I'm going to go with Charlize Theron because she's perfect for the role. All right, next we have Sabretooth, Garrett Hedlund from Triple Frontier and Tron Legacy. And Jason Momoa, Aquaman, and Game of Thrones. This is tight. I'm going to go with Jason Momoa, Aquaman. That would be so cool to see. I'd love to see that. You got to go blonde, though. You can't, like, have Z it. You know what I mean? If Sabretooth is Sabretooth. Make him freaking Sabretooth. All right, so let's take a look. So first we have Robert Pattinson, Joe Cole, Florence Pugh, Aja and Naomi King, uh, Levi Miller, Joel Egerton, Maya Mitchell, Peyton Elizabeth Lee, Charlize Theron, and Garrett Hedlund. And we have Team 2, Carl Urban, Colin Farrell, uh, Riley Q, if I'm saying that correctly, Naomi Harris, Jorge Lendeborg Jr., Dolph Lundgren, Rooney Mara, Lyrica Okana, and Sasha Lane, and Jason Momoa. So personally, if I got to choose between these teams, I think I'm going to go with... Huh, I think I'm gonna probably go with team two. I'm going with team two on this one. It's close, it's tough, but I'm gonna go team two on this one. And lastly, we have my fan castings, the Stuff of Legends show. I did some art for this one, and then we'll get into the final results right after this. So thanks for sticking around this long. I know we're going quite a way with this one, but you guys have been great. Let's go over my castings really quick. So first up, we have Scott Kahn from Hawaii Five-0 and Ocean's 13. He's five foot five, and Shia LaBeouf from Fury and Lawless, who is, I believe, he's five foot eight. And if you guys didn't look at the images on the t on the top left of each of those bottom images, would you have known? Maybe, maybe not. But uh, I think that either of these gentlemen would probably be doing a lot of bulking up, regardless, to play the role and trimming out as well, just like Hugh Jackman did and they would end up being perfect specimens to play the roles beyond their current abilities and aesthetics, which I think are great. So that's my opinion there. Let me know what you guys think about this down below. Next, we have Gambit, Channing Tatum, G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra from Gambit 2020, which is currently in development. Um, Marvel has uh, made that established, and it's that's what IMDb currently reads as of the making of this video. And Jay Ryan from Beauty and the Beast, CW, and Mary Kills People, um, is also a great choice and I did this art here so you could see them kind of in the role um, so yeah let me know what you guys think about these choices down below um, Rogue we have Adrienne Palicki from Friday Night Lights and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. again Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is in the MCU kind of but it's downstream of the MCU so I chose her anyway because I would hate to see her go to waste I want to see her get to be in the MCU on the big screen so Ashley Green, Twilight Saga and Accident Man, also great. Um, I think she's also good for this role. Both these ladies would be really good with um, pairing up with Gambit and having that flirtatious relationship that's um, self-forbidden, you know what I mean? Um, self-denying and that kind of thing. Really crazy relationship, it'd be fun. So either of them would be great. Next, we have Storm, Aurora Monroe. We have Nicole Bahari from Sleepy Hollow and The Express and Teona Paris from Mad Men and A Feel Street Could Talk. I did some edit here so you guys could see kind of them storming out a little bit. And uh, let me know what you guys think about these picks down below and which one you guys like the most. And next we have for Nightcrawler, Jean-Luc Bilodeau from Baby Daddy and Kyle XY and Timothy Chalamet from Lady Bird and Beautiful Boy. You'll notice there's no pick there for Timothy Chalamet because I think that image still looks quite a bit like him. 
<clears throat> and he's famous enough that most of you guys will probably recognize him anyway. So I didn't put the image of him there. But nevertheless, that's him. That's uh, Jean-Luc. And let me know which one you guys think. I picked kind of older and a little bit younger. Um, that way, it would balance that out as options. You know what I mean? All right. So next up, we have Alan Richson for Colossus from Smallville and Titans. And then Florian Montianu from Creed 2 and Boga. I think both these gentlemen would be savage as Colossus. And I think they both look the role. So I chromed them out so you guys could see what they would look like as Colossus. Let me know what you guys think about these down below. And we have Shadowcat, Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things and Velvet Buzzsaw, and Haley Steinfeld from Bumblebee and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, I really like both these actresses, and again, you guys already know, Natalia Dyer is my favorite pick, with Haley Steinfeld as a very, very close second. So let me know what you think about these edits and these castings down below. That'll help me out. All right, Brenda Song for Jubilee, uh, and Ellen Wong from Scott Pilgrim and Glow. I think both these ladies would do really well in the role. They both look the part and uh, they both would probably be a lot of fun to watch on screen as well. They're both fun actresses. So uh, even though they're a little bit older than like Peyton Elizabeth Lee, for example, I think it would still be fun to see them in that way. All right. And now we have Mystique. We have Sophia Batella from Kingsman, The Secret Service, Atomic Blonde. And we have Gina Carano from Kickboxer Vengeance and Deadpool. Um, so I think both these chicks would be awesome. In real life, both of these chicks have um, some fight experience. Um, they're both talented athletes. Um, Gina Carano was in the UFC and uh, Sophia Batella was a world renowned dancer, uh, gymnast, um, and now she's a stunt woman. And then she, Carano, Gina Carano was starting out as a stunt woman, but she got the role in Deadpool. Now she's starting to get roles in other things as well. Um, but I think both of these ladies look a great deal like, like Mystique and would play a really savage Mystique nonetheless. So those are my picks for them. And then my choices for uh, Sabretooth are James Preston Rogers from Outlander and Alpha Wolf and Ryan Hurst from The Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy. Um, those to me are really great. <clears throat> I would really like to see James Preston Rogers particularly, but also I think Ryan Hurst would do a good job. These edits are not the best in the world, but it's kind of just to give trick your eye into thinking they're playing Sabretooth or like at first glance you see them. Oh yeah, that totally looks like Sabretooth. Even though my edits aren't that great, I hope that you guys can enjoy them and appreciate what I'm trying to convey. The message I'm trying to share with you guys is that these guys would be good for the role. So that's the point of the edit. So anyway, now let's take a look at the rosters. Team one, Scott Kahn, Channing Tatum, Adrian Palicki, Nicole Bahari, Jean-Luc Billadou, Alan Richson, Natalia Dyer, Brenda Song, Sophia Butella, and James Preston Rogers. And team two is Shia LaBeouf, Jay Ryan, Ashley Green, Teona Paris, Timothy Chalamet, Florian Montianu, Haley Steinfeld, Ellen Wong, Gina Carano, and Ryan Hurst. So I'm probably not gonna pick between my own teams. You guys let me know which of my teams did you like the best? And did you like my edits? Were they good? Were they garbage? Let me know, because I'm just getting started into this world. I want some critiques, I want some criticism, and I want some advice as well. If you guys are editors out there, let me know. And now we're here. So you guys have stuck it out. You guys have been here for about three and some odd hours. You guys have stayed here longer than the length of Avengers Endgame. I'm so proud of you guys. Now we're getting into the final results, so let's not waste too much more time. Here are the most wanted actors to play the MCU X-Men. I'm gonna tally up all the votes, all the results of everyone's castings, and then we're going to count them to see who got the most votes and which actors are most wanted. So let's get into this. First up, the most wanted, uh, the most wanted actor to play Wolverine in the MCU is Tom Hardy with 13 votes. That's massive. 13 votes out of 30 fan casters is quite a bit of people wanting to see Tom Hardy play this role. And the follow-ups are awesome too. Look at second place. We've got Shia LaBeouf with four votes. Tied with that is Scott Kahn with four votes. And then following that in third place, we have Daniel Radcliffe, Charlie Hunnam, and Scott Eastwood with three votes each. So those are your actors most wanted to play Wolverine in the MCU. Give it up for Tom Hardy being the winner there. Most wanted actor to play Gambit in the MCU is Gaspard Uliel with nine votes. That's epic. And again, we're talking about 31 fan casters. Nine votes is a considerable amount. Following that, we have second place Ian Somerhalder and Jared Padalecki with five votes each. 
and third place being Channing Tatum and Garrett Hedlund with four votes each. That's also impressive. Good job to these guys, and I hope that one of these guys lands the role in the MCU. Next, we got the most wanted actress to play Rogue in the MCU is Lily James with six votes. Six votes, again, that's a fair amount, but it's not a ton. And we're gonna see some runner-ups here. Now, second place is Alexander Daddario coming in just shy with, with five votes. And third place is Natalia Dyer and Daisy Ridley with four votes each. I think that's really impressive. And uh, I really like all of these choices. I particularly like Alexander Daddario. I think Daisy Ridley and Lily James would be really great. I think Natalia Dyer is a little bit young, but nevertheless, great choices, great actresses. And let me know what you guys think. All right, next up, we have the most wanted actress to play Storm in the MCU is Yaya DaCosta with nine votes. That's considerable. And we have runner-ups, um, Oh, I'm sorry, this should, this should read second place is Sonequa Martin-Green with seven votes. And third place is Gugu Mbatha-Ra with six votes. Very impressive. I like these actresses to play the role. Yaya DeCasa was one of my favorites. I'm glad that she won and I hope that she gets the role. For most wanted actor to play Nightcrawler in the MCU is Timothy Chalamet with nine votes. Dude earned it, dude looks the part, dude should play the part, he's fun loving, he's great at emotional acting, he's a talented young actor. I hope he gets this role. It would really propel his career in a good direction. And also, the runner ups here, we got a lot of runner ups. We have second place, tied for second is Asa Butterfield, Ezra Miller, Bill Skarsgård, Fionn Whitehead, and Thomas Brody Sangster, all with four votes. And in third place, we have Rami Malek with three votes. Really cool, massive tie for second. That's really awesome. Next up for Colossus, number one most wanted actor to play Colossus in the MCU is Alan Richson with 10 votes. One third, approximately one third of the entire fan casting summit wanted him to play the role. And to come in second, we have Danila Kozlovsky in sec seven, with seven votes. And third place is Liam Hemsworth with six votes. It's super awesome. Really impressed with this lineup. Wasn't what I thought was gonna be the most wanted, but I'm really grateful that this was anyway. This is really cool and I love Alan Richardson and Danila and Liam, I'm glad they got those and I hope one of them lands the role in the MCU. Next up, we have most wanted actress to play Shadowcat in the MCU is Haley Steinfeld coming in with 14 votes and runners up, we have second place Natalia Dyer and tied for third, we have, oh, and Natalia Dyer had nine votes and tied for third. We have Anna Kendrick and Odea Rush with four votes each. That's really cool. And this is one of the, you know, we've had this happen before, but to have this happen again, Natalia Dyer uh, came in, I believe it was second and or third place. She ranked in two different character categories. So that's pretty cool. She ranked as Rogue and she ranked as Shadowcat. I know that she's a fan favorite, obviously, and I hope that she gets one of these roles. Haley Seinfeld deserves it. I think Haley Seinfeld should get the role of Rogue. I'm sorry, of um, of Shadowcat in the MCU. Next, we have the most wanted actress to play Jubilee in the MCU is Peyton Elizabeth Lee with 13 votes. That's a lot of votes, guys. 13 votes um, to play Jubilee. And coming in second, we have Ellen Wong with eight votes. And very closely behind that, we have Brenda Song with third place. Very great. I love these actresses, and I think these would be the best choices for the MCU, depending on what age range you're looking at. So great choices. And we have a tie to play Mystique for the MCU's Mystique. Uh, we have first Sophia Batella and Charlize Theron with 12 votes each. 12 votes each. That's a lot of overlap, guys. 12 votes each. That's 24 votes all together. You know, so 12 each. And then second place, check this out. Yvonne Strahovski with three votes. And look at how many people tied for third. Tied for third is uh, Natalie Dormer with two votes, Ava Green, Catherine Winnick, Anna DeArmas, Elisa Vikander, Evan Rachel Wood, and Lauren Cohan, all with two votes. That's really impressive. So this should tell you almost everybody wants Sophia Batella and Charlie's Throne, and everyone else kind of like, some people have like, you know, like onesie twosies have like some overlap, but for the most part, these are the ladies you're looking at that are most wanted, and that's pretty cool. All right, next we have most wanted actor to play Sabretooth in the MCU is Ryan Hurst with a whopping 15 votes, followed closely by James Preston Rogers with eight votes and followed immediately after with seven votes is Jai Courtney for third place. These are really cool, really great actors. I love these guys. I hope that one of these guys lands the role in the MCU. 
to go up against Wolverine. That'd be so cool. I can't wait. So this is really great, guys. I love I love what we've been able to accomplish here. We've been able to show off the most common denominators, what everybody as a group wants to play the MCU roles. If you disagree with these, if you don't like these, let me know in the comment. And if you think these guys deserved it, if you think these guys are worth it and that Marvel should pursue it, Say that down below in the comments and share this with someone so that we can get the word out that Marvel needs to be looking at certain people that we have as a, as a group, as fans, want for these roles. So now we're looking at the final results. The most wanted actors in the X-Men X -Men and the MCU. Uh, we have Tom Hardy for Wolverine. For Gambit, we have Gaspar Duliel. For Rogue, we have Lily James. For Storm, we have Yaya DaCosta. For Nightcrawler, we have Timothy Chalamet. For Colossus, we have Alan Richson. For Shadowcat, we have Haley Steinfeld. For Jubilee, we have Peyton Elizabeth Lee. And for, for Mystique, we have Sophia Batella and Charlize Theron. And for Sabretooth, we have Ryan Hurst. So take a look, guys. This is the most wanted actors list for the MCU X-Men. Feast your eyes, guys. What do you guys think about this roster? Would you be happy to get this roster in the MCU? Let me know down below because this is the final roster here. And I'm so happy that we were able to come to this conclusion with a great consensus. 31 fan casters came together for this event. And this is really, really awesome. Fan casting summit number four was a smashing success. And I'm really grateful for this. Everyone, thank you so much for coming out. Before you go, I wanted to go through a list of the fan casters who participated in this event and name them by name. So if you guys don't mind, open up your Instagrams and follow these guys. We've got World of Fancasts, Fancaster76, Fancast underscore power, Fancast, I'm sorry, Jax.fancast, Nerds United. The Fancast Dude, Dream Fancast, Fancasting is Fun, Fancast Forever, Just Another Fancast Account, Fancast Infinity, Fancast Frenzy, Mr. Funcaster, Fancast 247, or rather 247, Fancast 247, Fancasting 10, Reimagine Fancast, Correct Rankings Fancast, Fancast Geek, Ultimate Fancast, User Fancaster 18, Fancasting Central, Fantasy Fancast 23, Nerdy Blurb TV, Fan Casting Incorporated, James the Butte Castiglione, Daft Detective, Fan Casting is Dope, Dr. Fancast, Devil of Fancast, Connors.fancast. I want to thank you. I thank you guys all so much for coming out, for participating, for helping me um, just get the voice of the people out. Because I want you guys, I want your voices, I want your passion for all these things, these fandoms, whatever it is that we're talking about. We want to let Marvel know that we want these guys, these actors, to get these roles. We want these roles cast. We want to see stories told with these characters. You know what I mean? And that's what we're all. That's what it's all about. And bringing that community together to have a blast have these conversations, agree, disagree, agree to disagree, and have fun doing it. So thank you guys so much for coming out. You guys really are the best. It's been such a great time, and I hope that you guys are having as much fun as I am. So thank you. Follow these guys on Instagram, and you guys rock. Anyways, thanks so much guys for stopping in to the Fan Casting Summit. I know this was a big, massive event, but I'm glad that you guys stopped in. I hope that you guys share this with a friend. Guys, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can be alerted right away when I go live next time. That way you guys won't miss a thing. Also be sure to check out the other Fan Casting Summits on the channel. You just go to my channel, you click videos, and you scroll down, you'll see it not very far from the top, or you can click on one of the two buttons that are gonna come up towards the end of this video um, on the left or the right. You guys, leave comments down below. I wanna hear from you guys so that we can have a conversation about who you want to play the MCU's X-Men. So let me know down below and let me know which of these guys and these castings and these rosters that you like the most. So anyways, thanks guys. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.